Fire sellout at the Kingdom, and with good reason why, an AFC West showdown. Today, it's the Seattle Seahawks hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. And good afternoon, everyone. Along with James Lofton, I'm Mike Green. There's a big game feeling in this building. They haven't had that a lot recently, and maybe it's because the Chiefs are here. Chiefs at 8-3 and three have the second-best record in the AFC, and they're coming off their best win of the season, an emotional victory over the Broncos last week. And they've done it, or continue to do it, without ever Skurback, their injured quarterback. Rich Gannon's come in, and he's kind of taking the same philosophy as they just get it done, they win somehow. Yeah, but Rich Gannon will also be the first to tell you that he and the offense did not play well last week, but they've been finding ways to win ball games. And last week it was the defense. Derek Thomas is back. He had two sacks. And also Tamarik Vanover, a great kickoff return for 77 yards, which really keyed the offense and got him into scoring territory. Now the Chiefs come in with momentum, just the opposite of the Seahawks. A devastating loss last week against the New Orleans Saints. So this is pretty much a must-win situation for them. Who do they rely on? Warren Moon. He's 41, but he's had a terrific year. Yeah, Warren Moon has been the one constant since he took over for John Fries. And when you talk to Marty Schottenheimer, he says there's no doubt this guy's a Hall of Fame quarterback. But he's got some problems on his offensive line. The right side is out. Frank Beattie and Grant Williams will start on the right side. But that's not the only injury news for this team. Yeah, and I think the one guy to keep your eye on is Daryl Williams. He pulled his hamstring at the end of the ballgame last year. He's having an all-pro season at free safety with eight interceptions. A game with major playoff implications. Seahawks and Chiefs coming up. We'll have the open and kick off when we return to the NFL on NBC. Hi, everyone. Let's quickly update you on the scores of the early games today, starting with a wild game in Foxborough just winding down. The Patriots with a three-point lead on the Dolphins, just seconds to play, and the Dolphins trying to recover an onside kick in the final seconds of regulation time. Dan Marino was intercepted for the third time today here by Larry Wiggum who had two of those picks. This ended Miami's bid to cut the Patriots' lead to three points. It cost them a field goal at the time. That field goal might cost them dearly if they don't convert in the final seconds here, but it's 27-24 at Foxborough, New England, in the lead. At Green Bay, the Packers blew open a tight game in the fourth quarter, beating the Cowboys 45-17. to The Packers now in control in the NFC Central. The New York Jets stalled a bid for a tie at the end of the game by the Vikings and beat Minnesota 23-21, a touchdown in the final into the game and then the Vikings needed a two-point conversion but Robert Smith is stopped by Rick Lyle of the Jets the Jets move to eight and four on the year 23-21 is the final score. The Chicago Bears over the Tampa Bay Bucks today, 13-7 at Soldier Field. In Philadelphia, the Steelers trailing the Eagles 23-13 late in the fourth. In Tennessee, the Oilers 31-14 over the Buffalo Bills. In Detroit, big day for Barry Sanders, 216 yards, 32-10. The Lions a winner. Baltimore losing to Arizona 13-10. And Atlanta beat the New Orleans Saints. We'll send you to the kickoff in San Francisco, Seattle, or Cincy right after this. It's a rivalry, but it's been dominated by one team recently. The Chiefs have won five straight, including earlier this season. And Dennis Erickson, since he's taken over with the Seahawks, looking for his first victory against Kansas City. Chiefs winning the toss, and Marty Schottenheimer electing to receive. And that means one of the most dangerous men in the NFL is on the field. Not Todd Peterson, that guy right there. Tamarik Vanover. Big game last week in a victory over the Broncos, and we're set to go. At the eight. Vanover taken down at the 23-yard line. And Rich Cannon will commit his third straight start for Elvis Gerback. The offensive line, Criswell Zott, who's on the verge of a Pro Bowl. Grunhard, Shields, the Pro Bowler. And Glenn Parker, a former Bill. Hill and Anders to the backfield. Andre Risen, Lake Dawson has been banged up, but he will start. And Derek Walker, the tight end. Gannon's a veteran. Tenth year in the NFL. But he wants to improve on his performance from last week despite the victory. They go on the ground. Greg Hill. Hill breaks the tackle. And finally run out of bounds. At about the 28, Jeremy Lincoln. On the tackle, the Seattle defense to start off on the front four, sack leader Michael Sinclair, Sam Adams playing very well, Sally Amua, the former chief, and Philip Daniels back and healthy. Moss, Wells, and Brown. Brown 
having a great year. Lincoln starting in place of Springs, Willie Williams, Jay Bellamy in place of the injured Blades, and Darrell Williams, the hamstring, only one practice this week, but he's out there. Second down at six. Again, Greg Hill. And Hill with an extra effort. Gets very close to a first down. Philip Daniels making the tackle. Hill started off last week, had a 35-yard run on his first carry, then only saw it two times after that. He's going to get the ball more this week. Yeah, but th this is exactly what frustrates Greg Hill coming off the field after two good rushes. And he, I talked to him before the game. He said, I'm the only starting running back in the league who only gets about 10 carries a game. And Marty Schottenheimer had told him, promised him, we'll get you 20, 25 tries before the season started. Well, Mr. Third and one is in the game, Marcus Allen. And that's what it is when we have motion on the line. Jeff Criswell jumping out. Larry Nemers is our referee today. False start, offense, number 69. Five-yard penalty, still third down. I want to welcome those who watched the Patriots defeat the Dolphins 27-24 in a big game in the AFC East. We have a big one for you from the AFC West. First drive of the game for Kansas City. After a false start, they now have a third and six. Three wide receivers in the game. Rich Gannon at quarterback. His first pass. Kimball Anders is a flag on the play, and Anders cut down. Willie Williams makes the tackle at the 30, but our first penalty marker or second one after that false start that brought them back. I think we're going to trade offsides penalties here and like Seattle was moving early. Yes sir, right back to where we were. We'll have a third and one once again. Defense offside in the neutral zone at the snap. Nose tackle. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Dennis Erickson was still upset about the Saints' loss late this week. It was one that's tough to forget, a game they really thought, some people thought maybe they were looking ahead to the Chiefs. And they came up short, third and one. Two tight ends in along with Marcus Allen who gets the call. And Allen easily with the first down up to the 37-yard line. You know, James, we talked about Warren Moon at 41, what he does. This guy at 37 is just amazing as well. And I don't know which one is, is more commendable. And think about Marcus Allen, a running back. He's the oldest guy to ever tote the ball in this league at that age. And, you know, he talked about retirement, but I don't see him slowing down. And he gets another first down. He's perfect on those third and ones. And in a quick drop, complete Andre Risen. Risen gets across midfield to the 48-yard line. Jay Bellamy making the tackle. Already starting with his Spider-Man routine. Yeah, one of the Seahawks, a defensive back, is slow to get up off the ground. They can ill afford to lose any more members of that secondary. Already out are Sean Springs, the, the great rookie, and Benny Blades, the strong safeties out. Now Jeremy Lincoln is slow to get up. And Lincoln, of course, is starting because of Sean Springs and that thumb injury. Yeah, Winston Moss, it looks like, rolls up on his uh, his leg, but he's up under his own power right now and trying to get off, and there's Moss going, hey, hey man, you got to get out of the way when I'm coming. So Lincoln will go to the sideline. That was a 14-yard pickup. We see some of the scores. Green Bay had a slow start, but a big finish, obviously, as very, they win at home very again. Big. And a very big victory for the New York Jets. A lot, a lot of important games. Certainly this week, Fred Thomas has come in for Lincoln. First down, they mark it after Seattle 48. Play fake down under a little pressure. Looks complete down to the 36-yard line. And another first down. This time, it's Tamar Vanover. Jay Bellamy on the tackle. I love the play calling by Paul Hackett. A defensive back goes down. You go in. You attack that area. Uh, and a guy to Mark Vanover, who they don't use a lot offensively, this time he runs a deep cross, and he makes a great catch because Bellamy has his arm on his left arm. 
The pitch to Hill. And Hill tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Bellamy. Little big play. And they've had big performances from guys stepping up because of the injuries. You just wonder, you know, eventually if it's going to take its toll. Well, I, I think it's been tough for this team. You know, offensively and defense, they've been able to maintain. But where they really had the breakdown was last week in the special teams area. And you take six starters and you have to elevate guys uh, from the backup roles that depletes your special teams. And they paid the price last week against the Saints. McMackin's done a nice job shuffling. Second and 11 on the one-yard loss. Allowed Kingdom early. Gannon, incomplete. Intended for Vanover. Lincoln right there on the coverage. Vanover wants to be a wide receiver. He's so dangerous coming out of the backfield. Well, they're still looking for that compliment opposite Andre Rise. And during the offseason, they had signed Brett Perryman, who has since been released and signed with the Miami Dolphins. But you have you have three guys who they're trying to fit in that bill. One is Tamar Vanover. Joe Horn, who was playing defensive back, who doubles as a wide receiver, and also Lake Dawson. Uh, Lake Dawson has had some knee problems, but they think he's healthy, he's rested, they think he's going to be quick, on, and he's a hometown product also. Third and 11. Blitz by Seattle. Gannon goes for the end zone, and he overthrows. Ryzen wanted an interference. Fred Thomas was right there on the coverage. And fourth down coming up for Kansas City. When you talk to Paul Hackett, he says, we're going to take our shots deep. We'll run stop and go out and up. And that time it just bump into the guy, throw him out of the way. If anybody's going to get the if anybody's going to get the flag thrown on, it would have been Andre Risen there. Louis Aguiar will come on the punt. Ronnie Harris will be back. And Aguiar in his career has never had a punt block. And throwing it high. Caught! It's caught at the one yard line. Kevin Lockett. What a play. Did not expect that one. Well, Ronnie Harris, the punt returner, saw the ball thrown. He tried to be a defensive back. He just gets out jumped by Kevin Lockett for the ball. That's one way to keep them from blocking your punts is to throw the ball. <laughs> and as a little kid, that's something you think about doing at the park. Catch that ball at its highest point. Lockett goes up. He gets the rebound. First and goal at the one on the fake punt. Marcus Allen. Second effort. Touchdown. The 120th career rushing touchdown for Marcus Allen. He's now number one with the Chiefs. What a quick turn of events. Stojanovic on for the extra point. And the Chiefs, who've had to come from behind, nine of their 11 games this season, jump out to an early lead thanks to the 37-year-old veteran. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. By Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By AT&T, it's all within your reach. And by DirecTV, satellite TV at its best. Marty Schottenheimer with a gamble early. It pays off. And it sets up the first score of the game. You know, normally when you think about punting from this area, the one thing you worry about is kicking the ball in the end zone, the other team getting it back out of the 20. And Martin Schottenheimer, the ultimate gamble here on the road, he says, you know, we're in this ball game to win it. We're not going to play conservative. Everybody thinks that I'm this died, stayed in the wool type of guy. Marty says, I like to party. <laughs> Kevin Lockett, second round pick out of Kansas State. That hit his first career NFL reception. Stojanovic, a short kick. Broussard at the 10. And Dana Hughes hanging on and runs Broussard out of bounds at about the 23. That's where Seattle will take over. Warren Moon already trailing 7 0.
This is the NFL on NBC. Warren Moon was not happy with his performance last week. A subpar performance through the interception in overtime that led to the game-winning field goal. Also led the drive that tied it up near the end of regulation. But bottom line, a devastating loss. And Moon called it a must-win here today. First and ten. They're at their own 23. Moon looks downfield already. And well short. Dale Carter on the coverage of Galloway. And let's take a look at the starting offensive lineups. A banged up offensive line. Beatty is starting for Derek Graham and Williams starts for the veteran Howard Ballard. Warren and then the three wide receivers Galloway Pritchard and James McKnight in place of Brian Blades. You'll see four wide receivers as well. Carlos to Crumpler the starting tight end. Second and ten. We did look downfield a lot last week against the Saints because of all the pressure a lot of short drops. On the ground to Warren. And Warren falls for maybe two yards. Gang tackle there by the Chiefs. The Kansas City defense that has played very well. Change in the front three. Dan Williams for the injured John Browning this afternoon. Booker and Phillips out there as the norm. Terrific linebackers led by Derek Thomas. He told Schottenheimer he's back last week. Wayne Simmons, the former Packer. Edwards and Davis have been terrific. Carter and Hasty, the veterans. Tongue and Woods, young but very talented at the safeties. Third and nine. Here come the Chiefs. Moon fires incomplete intended for McKnight. Mark McMillan right there in the coverage. Three and out for Seattle. And a flag is thrown. And there's some pushing and shoving after the whistle. That's that nice guy Pete Kendall and Donnie Edwards are just getting acquainted there. And right there's a flag thrown. They just couldn't separate from each other. It's Kendall. And Kendall's been doing a great job. This year. He's been very quiet. Donnie Edwards takes the head, thrust him to the ground. You know, invariably, no one gets penalized here, and it's be on each side, but Donnie Edwards certainly initiated that. And if he got that foot up there for that kick, that may be the personal foul. By the timing of the official throwing the flag, that could be it. Those officials are, are so slow, though. He could have been reacting to something 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Well, I think that's a rather bad indictment <laughs> on officials. I mean, they, they don't have the quickness. They've lost a step. Let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, letting the guys kind of sort it out, as Larry Nemers will. Personal foul for unnecessary roughness on the defensive team number 59. 15-yard penalty, first down. Schottenheimer, who hates penalties as much as any coach in the NFL. Of course, they all do. But it drives him nuts, and Edwards will give a first down to Seattle. You know, and we have the, the benefit of slow motion, instant replay, looking at it from a couple of angles. I mean, it, it's hard to see where the punching and the kicking is coming from. They did a great job in, in deciphering that one and, and penalizing the correct player. I don't know if Schottenheimer thinks they got the correct player. With the ball all the way up now to the 39 yard line. Pritchard goes in motion. Warren trying to get outside, and James Hasty runs him out of bounds. Pickup of about three or four. You know, Chris Warren is, is having, a, you know, what he considers a good year. He, he doesn't have the, the volume of carries that he had, say, in his Pro Bowl years. You look at how often he used to carry the ball when he went to the Pro Bowl. He had a lot of carries. This year, only 12.8. Granted, he says, maybe I'm getting a little older, but I'm still getting better. And he says, really, the key is to get this team in postseason play. Coming off his best game of the season last week at 87 yards rushing, caught seven balls. Picks up three on that play, second and seven. Warren. Excellent pursuit from the Chiefs. And maybe back to the line of scrimmage on that play. Derek Thomas right there on the tackle. And when you think about the Chiefs linebackers, Derek Thomas, you know that he has great speed. Anthony Davis, the other outside linebacker, has great speed. 
Donnie Edwards calls himself the fastest middle linebacker in all of football, and he also says he's the fastest Chiefs linebacker. But when you bring that up to Derek Thomas, Derek Thomas doesn't want to hear any parts of it. He even has some documented stuff that in, in <laughs> what, zero to ten yards, he's faster than Donnie Edwards. Always have to give that veteran a little extra respect. Edwards not willing to do that in that particular competition. Third and nine. Going to the shotgun. Bobby downfield for McKnight. He's got it. And McKnight pushed out of bounds inside the 30. Mike McMillan knocked him out, but a big play for McKnight. 34-yard pickup. And we mentioned the injury bug that has hit the Seattle Seahawks. Well, Brian Blades would normally be in the game at this position. But I talked to Brian on the field before the game, and he said, this guy, James McKnight, has a world of talent. Last week against New Orleans, two huge plays, one touchdown reception. He is going to be a big star for these guys up here. He's averaging over 21 yards per catch. His first two years in the league, he caught eight total passes. He's got 18 this year already. And that penalty has really turned it against Kansas City. Warren slowed down by Davis. Still manages to pick up about three. Jerome Woods helping in on the tackle. Woods in his second year. You know, we talked about Chris Warren in those Pro Bowl years, and it was kind of like, Chris who? Who's this guy up here in the Pacific Northwest? You have to get an appreciation for the way that he runs the ball. Because at 6'2", almost 230 pounds, you'd expect him to run over people. But he really is a slider and a slasher and a guy who really does glide, and he picks his holes very well. Second and six. the tight end cut down at the 18 Dale Carter right there to stop him third and short coming up and I think that Crupler is a nice addition to this offense you talk about the fact that this guy wasn't even a starter in week one as a matter of fact he didn't even play in the very first game of the year but he has really come on and he gives Warren Moon that extra component a guy who can go down the middle catch the ball and that time he just gets lost in the coverage as the two wide receivers kind of pick and rub for him Erickson calls him perhaps the most pleasant surprise this year. They fumble the snap. Juan Booker right there to make sure he can't get any further. And it's going to be shy of the first down. Larry Nevers saying official time. When you're 41, you don't want to be under that. When you're 21, you don't want to be under that. <laughs> now, he, he's a little short on this, and I think the question now is Dennis Erickson kick the field goals. Todd Peterson, who missed two kicks last week, he had a new holder in Kyle Richardson. In this ball game, he's going to use his old holder, Rick Tootin, who's not going to punt. We'll hold for him, so huge decision here for Erickson at home. It's obvious what the crowd wants. And yeah, Tootin's not going to come out, so they're going to go for it on fourth and inches. Who took over week one? John Freeze broke his thumb in the opening game against the Jets. And I think he surprised a lot of people. Although he's up there and what all time record, I'm sure he doesn't want to be. <laughs> it's his first NFL record, all time. So fourth down at inches. Max Strong. First down to the 11-yard line. Strong the fourth year fullback out of Georgia. It's only his fourth carry of the season, but a big one. Yeah, and a, and a great change of pace because Max Strong, when I list him, I put lead blocker. I, I don't, you know, he doesn't carry the ball a lot, doesn't catch a lot of passes. That time they really crossed up the Kansas City Chiefs with a good call. Well, the ball down to the 11. Got some extra yards with a bit of a dive. Strong and Warren stay in the backfield. And they stay on the ground with Warren. And Warren stopped after about two yards. Wayne Simmons making the stop. Kansas City Chiefs trying to hold off here. They're one of the best when it comes to red zone defense third best of the NFL 
the Hawks, meanwhile, have not been able to punch it in when they're in the red zone. Certainly not enough. And if you look at the makeup of the, of the Seahawks, they have Chris Warren, who's a slasher. He's not a power back, and it gets congested down here, nor do they have a big wide receiver. They have a lot of small, quick guys, but the field shrinks down here, and that makes it tough for the small guys. Lamar Smith has come out of the backfield, along with three wide receivers. Smith breaks one tackle. And then he's mauled as a flag comes in late. Smith has missed the last four games with a broken bone in his leg. That's his first carry in a while as Derek Thomas and Joe Phillips see it on that tackle. Let's see what the penalty is. That's a signal for illegal block. So Erickson wanting to find out who's the culprit. A busy first quarter for Larry Nemers and his crew. Schottenheimer is screaming on the sidelines. It should be a dead ball foul. You can hear him all the way up here in the booth. Were a dead ball foul, then it would be a late hit. Previous spot. Crack back on the offensive team number 87. 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. To Mark Vanover. Excuse me, uh, Crumpler, the tight end. Now, now, see, that's an unusual call because Crumpler is lined up at tight end, and all he's doing is blocking down on Derek Thomas. Uh, that call will be argued vehemently when they look at the films and they send in the footage to the league office on Monday, but now they have to deal with second and 22. Seahawks on this drive because of a costly penalty by the Chiefs that now hurt themselves with their own costly penalty. We're going to have some time. Complete to Warren. And Warren tackled by Dale Carter. Get up to about the 19-yard line. Short pickup. Yeah, Warren Moon took the positive gain right there. If he holds that ball another tick, he has Mike Pritchard going down the middle to the post, and Mike Pritchard came open. Well, you can't blame him for, for getting rid of it quick after last week and the way the Chiefs rush. Well, and also in the back of his mind, he knows that the right side of his offensive line has been revamped. New starters at right guard and right tackle for injuries. Frank Beattie and Grant Williams. They've had some starts already this season. Third and 19. Who oh, looks for Galloway? He's got it. Touchdown, Seahawks. Touchdown reception of the year for Joey Galloway. And an all-pro matchup with a guy who is playing like an all-pro and a guy who's not playing like an all-pro any longer in Dale Carter. Dale Carter is still pretty good. He's injured his left arm, and he can't really jam with that arm. And when you're out there playing with one arm, it doesn't work against a guy like Joey Galloway. And his shoulder's been bothering him for weeks. And the extra point for Todd Peterson. Seahawks strike back. And the tough thing, Galloway makes a good move inside and all the room in the world to go outside on Dale Carter. Second-year linebacker Donnie Edwards is going to be a star in this league, and he's having a great year. But a costly personal foul penalty kept that drive alive for the Seahawks, and Seattle capitalizes. So Kansas City takes over their own 30. Greg Hill hesitates and gets mauled. Dean Wells hit him first. Chiefs, they scored on their first possession on a fourth down, a fake punt by Louis Aguiar, who threw a kind of an alley-oop pass at the one-yard line. That was hauled in by Kevin Lockett. That kept their drive alive. So some strange plays 
resulting in some points. Loss of one on that second and 11. Gannon steps up. Incomplete. For Joel Horn took a shot from Jeremy Lincoln. Lincoln's obviously okay after being shaken up earlier. And Joe Horn knows how to dish it out because he has also been experimented at defensive back this year. So he knows about laying it on wide receivers. And he's the fastest guy that they have to line up at wide receiver. And Paul Hackett said, I need to get him into the game. You, you saw him kind of bracing for the hit there. That's not true wide receiver form. Right. You have to lay out and catch that ball. You catch it. Does it hurt as much? No, it doesn't <laughs> hurt at all if you catch it. Third and 11. Penalty markers. Gannon has plenty of room in front of him. And eludes and gets the first down up to the 42. But again, a flag on the play. Michael Sinclair with some good hustle to track him down. Seahawks are signaling that it's against the Chiefs. Defense, number 70, offside. Penalty decline, first down. So Sinclair actually with a penalty. And when we talked to the Seahawks yesterday, we said, will you spy... Rich Gannon, a guy who does run well, they said, no, we're going to lay our guys back in coverage. And if he's going to beat us with his feet, so be it. But we don't want to give him the easy throws down the field because you have an extra guy just laying around the pile to make sure he doesn't run. They're just shy of their own 42. Kimball Anders hit immediately. And Sally Amora, the former chief. Right now, let's head back to New York and get an NFL update with Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Mike, at Cincinnati, the Bengals jumped on top of the Jaguars, but Mark Brunel brings them back. 24-yard touchdown pass to Pete Mitchell, 14-7, but the Bengals have just come all the way back with the kickoff inside the Jacksonville 10-yard line late in the first quarter, right? Thank you, Greg. Too many lefty quarterbacks in that game. <laughs> Osias, and of course, starting for Cincinnati. Gannon, Chad Brown chasing him down. Gannon throws complete to Anders, and what a shot he takes. Actually, it was Gonzalez who made the catch. Brown forcing Gannon to kind of throw it up there. But I think right there on the tail end of that play, you saw what I consider one of the best safeties in the NFL in Darrell Williams and a guy who is going to be a huge star in this league in Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez is not only a good athlete, he is an aggressive athlete. When other guys catch the ball, that's the type of blows that he lays on defenders when they're trying to tackle his, his, his teammates. How do you hold on to that? Third and four, final play of the first quarter. Complete, Anders has the first down as he leaps to the 43-yard line. Winston Moss makes the tackle. And that will end the first quarter. An exciting one of the kingdom. It's loud and it's sold out. And the Chiefs and Seahawks, they're tied at seven in this AFC West showdown. Chiefs wanted to upgrade their tight end position. They certainly did so with their first round pick. Tony Gonzalez out of Cal. A tough kid is evidenced by that. Holding on to the ball after the shot from Williams. Gannon looks, rising in stride. And he's tripped up at the 14-yard line. Jeremy Lincoln takes him down. But Andre Risen hauls it in. Very reminiscent of his days while he was with the Atlanta Falcons. He just bends to the outside, and it's just a route straight up the numbers. Widens a little bit. He makes Lincoln think that he's going to go outside of him. Ball's just thrown on a rope inside. And then he does his Spider-Man act, and Lincoln's shaking up again. He's obviously hurting. Well, Lincoln had a, a bit of a hamstring pull two weeks ago. He got beat on a, a long pass from Tony Martin of the San Diego Chargers. You know, you're talking about uh, the attrition rate here. Now you, you've lost three defensive backs. Sean Springs, Benny Blades, Lincoln. When you get down in the numbers, it's really tough to, to field your nickel defenses with five defensive backs, your dime defense with, with six defensive backs. And it's also going to impact what happens on special teams. So Fred Thomas comes in again. First and 10, ball now at the 14. 
Kimball Anders. Now to about the 10. Dean Wells in on the tackle. You know, when you think about the Seattle Seahawks in this ball game, you know, you of course you have your four starters, but behind them, Stokes is a backup. Fred Thomas, he's now in the ball game. You have Tim Howe, and, and that's really it. It gets thin after this. CJ Richardson, but, but you're talking about guys who are primarily used for special teams. You don't want them out there trying to cover your Andre Risens and your Lake Dawson. See how serious that injury to Lincoln is. Second down at six. Gannon. Complete. And Gonzalez with a nice catch. Jay Bellamy tackles him at the five. Gonzalez reminds Marty Schottenheimer of Ozzie Newsom. Yeah, but, but kind of a current day Ozzie Newsom when you, you add in uh, weight training starting at 10 years of age, uh, uh, the athletic skills. When Ozzie Newsom was playing, he was the state of the art tight end. If he was coming out of college now, granted, he wouldn't be a first round pick. He'd probably be. A guy drafted uh, the second day. <laughs> Third down and one. And Allen doesn't look like he got it. Strong play from the entire front line. And it looks like we have another fourth down coming up. Stojanovic trots out onto the field. That's a good yard short. Stojanovic, of course, the hero from last week. He's made 12 in a row, and he called the 12th the biggest of his career. His longest one in eight years, the 54-yarder to beat the Broncos. And this one just a chippy. And then he puts it through. 22-yard field goal for Pete Stojanovic, and it's 10-7 Chiefs. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Acura, the true definition of luxury, yours. By American Express, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Call 1-800-RENT-A-CAR. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. The Kingdom used to be one of the toughest places in the NFL to play. Marty Schottenheimer told us that yesterday. And they haven't had a lot of big games in recent years, but this certainly is one in the crowd very loud thus far as Stojanovic will kick off. A short kick. Broussard at the 11. And Broussard taken down. Kevin Lockett makes the tackle. And Warren Moon will come back onto the field. And once again, time to remind you to follow the NFL online at MSNBCSports.com. Randy Cross compares West Coast football to Smash Mouth football. Gil Graham investigates the Cowboys coaching situation and where George Seifert may wind up next season. Plus Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern chat with Giant safety Jason Seahorn and quarterback Danny Cannell all at MSNBCSports.com. Now when I think about that one of the components of the West Coast offense is to be able to run the football well. Let's see Randy's forgotten that now that he's a slim down announcer. Maybe you should call him. Maybe he won't or, accept or your call. Or email him. <laughs> yeah. First and 10 at their own 26. Moon complete to Galloway. And Galloway run out of bounds by Hasty at the 36-yard line. Let's head back to New York again. Another NFL update with Greg Gumbel. All right, Mike, in Cincinnati, Mark Brunel and the Jaguars had cut the Bengals' lead in half at 14-7. This is the kickoff which followed, and David Dunn scoots 85 yards, putting the Bengals in position again. Corey Dillon scored from three yards out, and with the extra point, Cincinnati back up by two touchdowns, 21-7 in the second, Mike. Thank you, Greg. Why can't they ever start off a season strong? Bengals playing well down the stretch again. Second and one. Chris Warren, you see, split out as a wide receiver. Moon is hit hard as he throws. Hasty on the interception. And he's tackled right there at the 30. Moon took a shot. And he threw it short. Hasty comes up with the interception. That's his third of the year. You know, as crazy as it might seem, James Hasty, who is arguably their best defensive back against Chris Warren, who's a very nice running back, but you don't expect the guy to be going deep. He has Hasty beaten deep, and it, I think it was the element of surprise that they were banking on. But what they didn't count on was Warren Moon getting hit while he's trying to throw the football. 30th of his career, Hasty now is 10th year in the NFL, 
maybe the most physical cornerback in the NFL. Former New York Jeff. First and 10 at the 31. Chiefs lead it 10-7 early second quarter. Gannon to Ryzen. And Ryzen hit by Fred Thomas, but not before he gets a first down at the 42. And the Spider-Man stuff, you know, he says the reason he does that is he always felt that Spider-Man was an underappreciated, not respected superhero. I don't think Spider-Man really had a long-running cartoon series. You know, Superman was on for a long time. Batman was for a long time. Spider-Man, you know, just a couple of years and then off the air. I think it's that stupid skin-tight outfit he wears. <laughs> or something different, you'll get more respect. First and ten, Gannon going deep for Joe Horn. Almost intercepted. Fred Thomas was right there and had it in his hands. Marty Schottner being a little creative. Yeah, yeah. Air Marty is on display today. What they're doing, they're really going to try and keep the Seattle Seahawks defensive backs on their heels. They throw short. And the quick slant in front of Thomas, Andre Risen had beaten Lincoln earlier. And that time, you had two defensive backs running down the field for the ball. You think Joe Horn might have forgotten he was a receiver. For second and ten. Kimball Anders. Uh, and Anders with a big hole. Flag comes in. He's taken down finally by Darrell Williams. You know, when it looked as if he should have been bottled up, we both expected him to be tackled in the backfield. All of a sudden, the big hole appears. It only appears because it's holding. <laughs> so another penalty for the Chiefs. So let's get the official word from Larry Nemers. During the run, holding on the offensive team, number 83. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Larry Nemers, seventh year as a referee. He says his best moment in the NFL. He was a side judge in Super Bowl 25. That was the one during the Persian Gulf War. During the national anthem, he's standing next to Jim Kelly and Bruce Smith, ready to bring them out for the coin toss. And he's crying as Whitney Houston is singing a very emotional anthem. And he's afraid that these two guys are going to see him. Then he looks at Kelly, he looks at Smith. They're both bawling. And he felt a little bit better. <laughs> Said one of his most emotional moments. And as Andrews spins and taken down, Dan Saliamua right there. You know, when you go against the guy year after year in practice, as Dave Zott has, and you know his moves, he knows your moves, these two guys aren't going to fool each other a lot. But Sally Moo is, is very crafty. Uh, he's been in this league a long time. He was an all-NFL guy way back in 1990. I mean, that's when he was at the peak of his career. And he says, now, granted, I may be going downhill, but I'm so big, I got a lot of hill to go down. <laughs> he's 32. And he set up a third and 16 for the Chiefs. Gannon under fire. Incomplete. Dawson and Ryzen were in the vicinity, but good coverage and good pressure. Fourth down coming up. But I love what Paul Hackett is doing. This is the third week that Rich Gannon has been the starter, and you can see that they are really starting to focus in on what Rich Gannon does well. That time they let him escape the pocket, try and throw the ball on the move, Rich Gannon is very mobile, and he can outrun any defensive lineman that the Seattle Seahawks throw at him. So Aguiar on to punt. Ronnie Harris back at his own 20. 533 now without a block. And a fair catch called by Harris at the 28-yard line. That's where Seattle will take over. They're trailing 10-7. Here's second quarter. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Domino's Pizza, delivering a million smiles a day. Call for a hot pizza now, and you'll be smiling by halftime. Seattle Seahawks at 6-5, and five, still very much in a playoff picture. You think that you have to win 10 games to make it, so they've got to... They got to win four or five. And even more importantly, they have to start beating teams in their own division. And you saw the record earlier, Dennis Erickson, 0-5 versus the Chiefs. And he realizes that this is the hurdle that they have to get over. First down at their own 29. Boom, thanks, and it's sacked. Boom, taken down. Anthony Davis was back there along with Derek Thomas. 
it, it would take a long time for us standing way up here to figure out what that play was all about. Or what went wrong exactly. As you see their offensive coordinator, Bob Rutkowski. He's thinking, you know, that's the play that we let, you know, the uh, president draw. He was in town the other day <laughs> and he wanted to run one play and now we got it out of the way. I like that. Blame it on Bill. <laughs> Five yard loss, second and 15. Whistles coming in. Got a delay of game. That was a that was a quick 40. If that yeah. was a 40 second clock. With all due respect to Mr. Nemers, I'm tired of seeing him in the first half. And they like it better when you're not seeing as much. There's no foul on the play. Second down. Well, that explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, second and 15. Do you think that, that he just likes being on camera? Yeah, yeah, but it's Warren like, Moon is notorious like for standing court. under the center a long time because he is waiting for the defense to declare itself. He wants to see where these guys are going to line up, and where they're going to move to. So again, second and 15. Moon under some pressure, gets it away, batted down by Pella McDaniels. So a third and 15 coming up. Now, uh, see, Pelham McDaniels is one of those guys at 6'3", 285 pounds. I mean, he looks like a defensive lineman, but they line him up occasionally at linebacker, sometimes at defensive line, and he creates identity problems for the offensive line. And I don't mean the offensive linemen are trying to figure out, you know, what type of person am I? <laughs> you know, what do I want out of life? They can't figure out, is he a defensive lineman or a linebacker? He's quick. Vaughn Booker with good pressure to help force that. Moon under pressure again. Complete to Pritchard at the 40. Pritchard makes a move. And he's knocked over at the 47-yard line by Mark McMillan. And McMillan is shaken up. Well, apparently he's okay. Mighty Mouse on the turf for a moment. Now, because of the injury to Brian Blades, Mike Pritchard has now moved to the inside slot receiver role and he says it's new for me I did it when I was with the Atlanta Falcons but you see when he caught that ball he wasn't sure where he was he said I know there's supposed to be guys around me because that's what happens when you play slot that time there was nobody there he looked for someone almost to run into first and ten of the 46 moon again Pritchard Pritchard shakes and bakes fumbles the ball take it away Jerome Woods and it's Kansas City ball. Pritchard was on his way to another first down. And that was the play that they tried to run earlier in this drive. And you see the ball just getting ripped out by Jerome Woods. Great job in just stripping the ball. Mike Pritchard has that ball in his left arm. He should have it in his right arm away from the defenders, away from where the trouble's coming. Instead, he has it on the inside. Jerome Woods does a great job in creating a turnover. Terrific strength to grab it away. Woods has already caused problems for the Seahawks. He had the interception in overtime in the first meeting, the one that set up the winning field goal. But just like that, Chiefs have it. First and ten at midfield. Gannon across the middle, and Horizon can't hold on to that one. Spider-Man's web has a hole in it. Uh, not so much Spider-Man there, and, and Rich Gannon will be the first to acknowledge that he threw this ball off the mark. You have a guy that wide open, and he gets the ball right below the knees. When you have to go down and your knees hit the ground before the ball gets to you, it kind of jolts where everything is. And that ball didn't hit his hands. Andre Risen has great hands, catches the ball well, can adjust to almost anything. But when your knees hit the ground as you're starting to go down, it's, it's kind of like somebody walking up and bopping you in the back of the head. <laughs> Here, feel that. Boom. He's third in the AFC in receptions, Gannon on a play fake. Flushed out. And Gannon gets some extra yards. Runs down to about the 45 yard line. About five yards shy of the first down. Darrell Williams running him out. And, and I think the play that Darrell Williams made right there at the end is the toughest play in all of football. I mean, you're a big, strong guy. You lift weights three times a week. You dream about, you dream about hitting the quarterback. You wake up 
Monday morning you think about the hits that you didn't get on. Then all week long you think about getting one shot on the quarterback. Here you have him on the sideline. And to be able to pull off shows a lot of maturity. Shows some football smarts too. There would have been a penalty to try to hit him there. Third and five. Gannon incomplete. He was under pressure. Chad Brown again was breathing on him. Rising the intended receiver. Martin Harrison also with good pressure. Yeah, and, and that is just collective pressure. You see Chad Brown with that hand up, and that's the way sprinters do when they're running in the Olympics as they're getting ready to go out of their zone in the relays. And that's what Chad Brown was. He's just a sprinter coming off on the ball and getting back at the quarterback. So Louis Aguiar back on. Aguiar already with a completion on that fake punt. Through a completion that set up the first touchdown for the Chiefs. They lead 10 to 7. Harris calling for a fair catch, but it goes in for a touchback. It's only the third touchback and 61 punts for Aguiar. They'll take over at the 20, trailing 10-7 Seattle. Just under seven remaining, second quarter. Chiefs lead the Seahawks 10-7. Seattle hoping to get on the board. You don't want to leave it to having to score in the second half against Kansas City. They have not allowed a second half touchdown since week five. That was against Seattle back in the end of September. Lamar Smith. And chase down. Derek Thomas with the tackle. Maybe a yard on the play. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure if, if running wide is the best thing that you can do against the Kansas City Chiefs. Number one, the guy playing over the tight end, Wayne Simmons, probably does that better than anyone else in the NFL. And then, then you throw in your middle linebacker, Donnie Edwards, great speed. Guy coming from the backside, Anthony Davis, great speed. And Derek Thomas, he, he invented speed and linebacker. <laughs> Four wide receivers, second and nine. Get there, somebody get to his ass. Boom, complete McKnight. Hasty right there, wraps him up at the 26-yard line. Third and a long four coming up. And there are some wide receivers when they catch that ball near the boundary, they think that the boundary is their friend. James oh, McKnight does a good job in turning it up and getting a couple of extra positive yards. And instead of a third and eight, now they have a third and four. And something that they can negotiate a lot better. Again, Smith is the lone setback. Galloway goes in motion. Moon under pressure again, and Moon is taken down at the 23-yard line. Vaughn Bucker helping out in there. Vaughn Booker at the top of your screen is just a little too much for Grant Williams. Grant Williams gets the arms on, but he can't get enough power to lock him out. He's almost standing erect and pushing down. He needs to lower, lower his butt a little bit so that he can get a better jam on him. Kyle Richardson comes on. He had the rough week last week. Fumbled a snap, had one blocked in his first game with Seattle. Great hand time. Vanover backtracks at the 25. Vanover breaks a tackle. Vanover across midfield. He fumbles. Ball is loose. Recovered by Seattle. Kevin Mawai picks up the loose ball. Oh, I love it. I love Kevin Mawai's reaction. I mean, he's pumped up as if he had scored his first touchdown. He's probably never scored a touchdown in his whole life, but that probably felt just as good as being in the end zone. I think it was Richardson who forced the fumble. Well, Richardson is right there because he's coming up, and he's going to be right there in the mix. Now, C.J. Richardson put the hat on the ball, but Kyle Richardson, he was there at the bottom of the pile. I mean, he's square. He's going to make this nice form tackle. And that's a lot of guy to try and tackle to Mark Vanover at 218 pounds. And he leaves some wreckage on the field in the form of Kyle Richardson. Richardson's still down. So the Richardson making the play, C.J. and Kyle. That's a pretty good hit for a punter. 
And this is what you call lumbering after it. Good heads up play. That's some nice agility. I'm all kidding aside. That's nice agility from the line. Yeah, but that's also a guy who handles the ball every play as their regular center. So, you know, he would tell you that, you know, you may talk about Blades and all the other guys, Galloway, but I got the best hands on the team. <laughs> but Mawai shaking up as well. He appears to be okay, however. But Kyle Richardson is the one that's still down. Yeah, and obviously here the concern is Rick Tootin, who is active for this ball game. Tootin is planning just to hold. He may now become the new punter. Kyle Richardson walked off on his own, but shaken up. Keeps turning his head and his neck. Yeah, but he didn't walk off real straight. No. <laughs> Kevin Mawai is fine. He wasn't injured, just probably tired. Moon under pressure again. And it's complete. Galloway, Dale Carter makes the tackle. See where they spot it. They'll put it at the 45, so it'll be second and three. And a lot of frustrated defensive linemen on that play because they ran directly by War Moon. We just saw with that commercial for the magicians, Moon did a vanishing act. I mean, he's standing there with the ball. The guys just sprint past him. He steps up, and he, he's going to find somebody to throw to if you give him enough time. Steve Broussard has come into the game. He's the lone setback, second and three. Broussard, first down across midfield. Jerome Woods makes the tackle. But Seattle and Kansas City territory. Well, it has been running back by committee for the Kansas City Chiefs and just as much so for the Seattle Seahawks. And if Bob Brukowski is upstairs and he's saying, well, we're not getting big holes, so let's put the small guy in. Broussard's averaging almost six and a half yards per carry this year. Because of the injuries worn earlier in the year, Lamar Smith, Broussard came in, provided a real spark in the San Diego game here in Seattle. And he gives them a first down. Broussard and Dale Carter runs him down after about three. In fact, Broussard is the only 100-yard rushing game of the season for the Seahawks. Yeah, and, and what he gives them, he gives them a, a great change of pace. You have a big running back and Chris Warren, who's a, a slasher and a glider. You have Lamar Smith, who, who likes to punish the tackler. And then you have Broussard, who can shake, bake, and he probably has more flat-out speed than all the running backs. His resurgence this year, he credits, he stopped partying. He got too much into the, the fun life for the NFL, and he settled down. Second down and eight. Broussard, taken down, picks up a couple. Helen McDaniels makes the tackle. But this is the style of run that the Seattle Seahawks want to try and accomplish against Kansas City. Kansas City, a very hard-charging team. They're going to send linebackers on rundowns. Guys get up the field quickly. So the offensive linemen then will try and steer the defensive rushers around. And it's, it's that draw look. It's kind of not a full draw where the quarterback goes back and sets up, but a quick draw. Approaching the two-minute warning, third and six. Long count from Moon. Trying to draw them off sides, and let's see if he did. So the conference of midfield, of course, he feels it's against Kansas City. That's to be expected. Defense, offside number 58, unabated the quarterback, five yard penalty, still third down. Derek Thomas. Well, not according to Schottenheimer. You know, Marty Schottenheimer's pointing because he really feels that, you know, there's a little head movement by Warren Moon. And also there's a receiver, Joey Galloway, up at the top, who he left on one when it was on two. <laughs> and there you see the penalties, unlike Kansas City, to be amongst the leaders. And what, what they have, 11 penalties last week, and Marty Schottenheimer has instituted in their practice sessions where if guys jump off sides and do all that, they could find 100 bucks. So he, he thought that would cure it, but you know, this is just an ongoing problem that has continued to plague this team all year long. And now we have the two-minute warning. 
because of the penalty. A third and one set up now for Seattle. Schottenheimer's Chiefs still lead it 10 to 7. Two minutes to go, second quarter in Seattle. Seahawks with a third and one at the Chiefs' 40 yard line. Both teams scored on their first possessions. Stojanovic adding a field goal to make it 10 7. Warren Moon has thrown an interception. Seahawks have also fumbled. They've had two turnovers. Kansas City with one. On third and one, Broussard still going. Gets down to the 36. Still, Thomas brings him down, but not before he makes the first down. Broussard having some fun today. Yeah, you have a minute and 40 seconds to go. You have all three of your timeouts. In Dennis Erickson's mind, we want to score a touchdown, but we won't, don't want to leave so much time on the clock that we give the Chiefs a chance to, to get a field goal or get some points of their own on the board. Ball now at the 36-yard line. Just under a minute and a half remaining in the second. Crumpler in motion. Moon complete to Pritchard. And Pritchard knocked out of bounds by Woods at the 20-yard line. And the first down. And I saw one of the officials go to that waist where the flags <laughs> are because Woods hit him right on the boundary. I thought that Pritchard was out on the far side from where he had gone out of bounds, but that was very close to drawing a personal foul. 14-yard pickup. And Pritchard stepping up a little bit. Again, with Brian Blades gone. That's close. Yeah, but, but I think in the official's mind is that Woods had already left his feet before Pritchard had really stepped out of bounds. And, and it wasn't to the head. It wasn't with the forearm. It wasn't helmet to helmet. So why throw the flag? Well, mark it at the 22. But another first down. Broussard remains in the game. And move on one hop to Broussard. Lyon has done a pretty good job. Considering last week, all the pressure they received in this week with Ballard and Graham out, they've done a decent job. Yeah, but be that as it may, you cannot have Warren Moon throwing the football and then picking himself up off the ground. Uh, at, at his advanced stage of his career, we won't mention how old he is, that he's 41 or anything like that, but he needs to be erect when he's throwing that football. You saw House Ballard on the sidelines. On a draw to Broussard. Steve Broussard! Touchdown, Seattle! What a run from Broussard! 22 yards! And it is the change of pace that Steve Broussard brings to this offense. He just has more speed than Chris Warren and Lamar Smith, not to say that you don't play them all. Play them all together because when you get that hard charging defensive front and then you get this little water bug to scoop by you, everybody's mad. You, you got the little guy in and he's going right past us. Peterson on for the extra point. And the Chiefs take a 14-10 lead. Broussard, the eighth-year veteran, with his fifth touchdown run of the season. And we mentioned Broussard, the change of pace. You get the lineman charging upfield. You get a good hole, and you get a nice block downfield coming into your screen. Daryl Hobbs, number 18. 18, that's a quarterback number. He was traded from the New Orleans Saints up here. They don't have any 80 numbers left. And Hobbs, who was actually a junior college quarterback, he says, well, it may not look good on me, but at least I'm in the NFL. Fun weekend for him, Washington State, where he went to school, going to the Rose Bowl. And now he's got four carries, 34 yards, and a very impressive touchdown run. And Seattle with their first lead of the day. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Greg Gumbel, Joe Gibbs, Chris Collinsworth, and Sam Weiss with scores and highlights on the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC halftime report. A lot of huge games today with big implications, including this one right here at the Kingdom. The dangerous Vanover at the six. And Vanover knocked backwards at the 25-yard line. 
Joe Kane, the veteran, makes the special teams hit. And Kansas City will take over. He had not had a good week last week. Dave Arnold, the special teams. And he's got his work cut out for him with going against Van Over all day. Nice to see the veteran Joe Kane make a hit. Such a pro with the Chicago Bears. Started his career here in Seattle. And now back with the Seahawks. So Gannon, with 102 remaining, Chiefs have all three of their timeouts left. Dumps it off, and it can't be handled. Anders just lost it off his fingertips. You know, I think now we may see the Kansas City Chiefs just decide to try and run as much time off this clock as they possibly can because if they continue to try and pass the ball, don't move the ball down the field, they then give the Seattle Seahawks a chance to get the ball back. And Seattle also with three timeouts remaining. No one's taking one here in the first half. So second and ten. There's the handoff, and Anders quickly hit Sam Adams. Ball knocked loose, but it was after the whistle. Sam, Sam Adams is having a terrific season. Dennis Erickson wanted him, and now he wants a timeout. Yeah, but, but he's not signaling for it demonstratively. He wasn't jumping up and down. He, he weighed it, you know. He's kind of, I think he's almost mad at himself because you have to decide before the play if they do such and such and they're not successful that we will call timeout. And that, that way you have a whole chorus on the sideline. Players, assistant coaches, trainers, managers, ball boys, everyone signaling for the timeout. We're now talking with Willie Williams. So they take one timeout. There's 40 seconds left and a third and 10 now coming up for Kansas City. And Dave Brown, who is the uh, Seattle Seahawks secondary coach, he was motioning for a timeout, but he was stationed about 30 yards away from Dennis Erickson. Brown is where the play is. Erickson is more up towards midfield. There's Dave Brown, who is also in the Wall of Fame here for the Seattle Seahawks, number 22. He went to Michigan. And I think he, he was happy about this uh, past uh, rivalry weekend. Michigan, of course, beating Ohio State. And Washington State beating Washington. And the big rivalry here. Going to the Rose Bowl. First time in a long time. 40 seconds remain. Third and 10. Gannon rising, tipped up in the air. And fortunately for the Chiefs, it hits the turf. Yeah, but that is ex the exact scenario that the Seattle Seahawks are wishing for. They didn't have to burn another timeout. Put a little pressure on Aguiar here so that he doesn't get one of those booming punts. Move the ball up the field. You have a chance at three points before the half ends. Aguiar comes on. Ronnie Harris back at the 25. A couple of weeks ago, Harris fumbled a few returns, one on a kickoff, one on a punt. And they were both returned for touchdowns. Yeah, he, he has definitely struggled. He's only averaging seven yards of return, which is one of the lowest averages in the AFC. Normally dependable hands. Aguiar, beautiful kick. And then Harris drops it at the 14. Some big hits. Flag is thrown. And he's taken out of bounds at the 24. Reggie Tung makes the tackle. Another chief down. It's Dane and Hughes. Tony Richardson also took a shot, but he got right back up. Whenever you kick the ball, punts or kickoffs, you have guys running full speed for 30, 40 yards, and that's when you have the most violent collisions. There's 23 seconds remaining in the half. During the return, there was a low block. On the receiving team, number 20, half the distance to the goal, first down. Jay Bellamy. Let's take a peek at it. You watch the right side of your screen, and you see he actually got pushed by number 49 into Dane and Hughes, and I don't think they saw that. You see the big block on Richardson later, but he was actually locked up with Richardson. He gets pushed, loses his balance, and then he falls into Dane and Hughes. 
And now the ball is brought all the way back to the eight yard line. So now with 23 seconds to go, do you forget about it and you just go in with the score the way it is? Yeah, you kneel down, and luckily for the Seattle Seahawks office, offense, that their locker room is right behind them. And all they do is just walk off the field after this. They don't even have the long jaw. <laughs> well, that's what they will do. And the Chiefs are going to call timeout. Well, Marty Schottenheimer is going to make them snap the football. Uh, we've seen stranger things. The center quarterback exchange. Crowd certainly not happy with it. And Schottenheimer talking with Jerome Woods. They still have two timeouts left. The Chiefs do. There is a certain code in the NFL, and it's called uh, brother-in-law. Uh, oh, I can't during, wait for this during, during training camp, uh, there's a certain pace that you go at the offensive lineman, defensive lineman during drills, and that's the way you treat your brother-in-law. You know, you, you punch him a little bit, but not real hard. Well, in this situation here where the quarterback is just taking a kneel down, there's supposed to be that brother-in-law code. You don't want anyone bursting across the line because Moon can get hurt taking a knee behind the offensive line. Moon's going to hand off. Johnny Edwards hits first. And still chugging along is Broussard. Jerome Woods finally takes him down. And they call another timeout. What's the mother-in-law when you really hit hard? <laughs> now, you said that. I did. <laughs> so the Chiefs take another one. They have one remaining. 11 seconds to go. Third and 12. Yeah, and, and we, we talked about the, the brother-in-law code. And the offensive linemen are thinking, well, they're not going to come off full speed. But you see the penetration by the Kansas City Chiefs. And Donnie Edwards is in the backfield. I mean, he almost disrupts the handoff between Moon and Boussard. And I don't think Warren Moon wants to go talk to Donnie Edwards and tell him about the brother-in-law code here. Well, it's when supposed he, to be in place. Well, when you hand it off on that, you can't blame him. I'm surprised he didn't just kneel down again. I mean, I know you want to knock a couple of seconds off. But they still have the one timeout, so they'll call it after this. Quickly, the Chiefs use their final timeout. The ball is going to be up the four-yard line. And they'll force a punt. You know, in, in hindsight, you look at it, uh, the punter just walked off. You know, he would not have passed a sobriety test the way he left the field. You have Richardson, who fumbled a snap, also had a punt blocked. And, and that's protection that got that punt blocked last week. Because Richardson told me, he said, my get-off time was fine on the one that got blocked. But we had leakage right up the middle. So you make a punt smart. Smart clock management here to end for Marty Schottenheimer. And again, Richardson had one block last week against the Saints. And this all started with the penalty that was called on the return team. That, that's what put him in this position where Marty Schottenheimer could then take a look at the clock and figure out you know, if we can pin him down here and make them do something they don't want to do. And even if he gets it off, you have Tamar Vanover back at midfield. And with the fair catch, you get a free kick from the spot. So I would actually put two guys back so that the ball cannot hit the ground. Interesting finish here to end the first half. And it hits the turf. Vanover, he called for a fair catch, but then it hit the turf. And they're gonna start it right there at the 48 yard line. And that'll end the first. Yeah, but still, you got to give him credit for trying. And that will make it halftime. Dennis Erickson pumped up. And it's his Seahawks in desperate need of a victory with playoff implications lead the Chiefs 14 to 10. You folks have been watching the Chiefs and the Seattle Seahawks. Welcome to our studio in New York, along with Joe Gibbs, Sam Weiss, Chris Collinsworth. I'm Greg Gumbel. Here are the scores and highlights as we have them for you now. First of all, in San Francisco, they've gone to the third quarter. The 49ers holding just a 10-point lead on the San Diego Chargers today. The game that you are watching, Steve Broussard's touchdown has the Seahawks on top of the Chiefs, 14 to 10. In Cincinnati, the Bengals to leading the Jacksonville Jaguars, 28 to 10. They're gone to the third quarter. And in St. Louis, Carolina with a field goal over the. San 
St. Louis Rams. It's 10 to 7 in the third. Earlier today at Foxborough, the Patriots beat the Miami Dolphins 27 to 24. Little razzle dazzle from New England here. Halfback option, Dave Meggett, 35 yards. Troy Brown will reach the end zone to give the Patriots a 10 3 lead. It was 17 to 3 in the second. Dan Mario intercepted by Jimmy Hitchcock, who comes down at the goal line and then takes off 100 yards for the score. Marino was picked off three times, two of them went for touchdowns. Patriots led 24 3 at halftime. They led 27 24 in the fourth. Miami recovered two onside kicks today. This recovery by Jerry Wilson in the final seconds gives Miami one last shot at tying or winning the game with three seconds left. Marino lets fly, but it doesn't reach the end zone. In fact, comes down well short. Chris Canny bats down the pass, sealing New England's 27 24 win. Look at the day Marino had 38 of 60 for 389. But the big numbers, Joe, no touchdowns, three interceptions. No touchdowns, two big mistakes that cost his team. Uh, let's give a call to Drew Bledsoe and Pete Carroll. I mean, I don't know of a, 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 any more pressure they've been put on any team than this week up there. All the disappointments they had, and I thought it was a heck of a job bouncing back. And they really did it by not making mistakes. Uh, Marino was spectacular at times, but he made two big mistakes that cost his team. Bledsoe, no interceptions, no turnover. Good, solid game. And they keep themselves in the hunt in the AFC East. Meanwhile, in Green Bay, big game for the Packers today. They beat the Dallas Cowboys 45-17. to Coming in, Mike Holmgren, Packer coach teams had never beaten the Cowboys. They were 0-7. 7-3 for Green Bay, second quarter. Brett Favre's pass intended for Derek Mays. Picked off by Deion Sanders, and he will high-step it down the sideline. 50 yards. Cowboys grab a 10-7 lead. Tied at 10 in the third. A pass interference call on Sanders. Put the Packers at the 5. Two plays later, Favre to Mark Chamorro. A four yard touchdown, Green Bay up 17 to 10. And then Favre to Chamora again, this one good for two yards. Favre was pumped up. The Packers went up 24 to 10. They went on to win it 45 to 17. 22 straight regular season wins at home, 25 straight overall, and a big win for the Packers. A huge win today, especially in light of what is happening around the rest of the National Football League with Minnesota and Tampa both losing. Now Green Bay by themselves in first place in that Central Division. And I think they've reestablished themselves now as the team to beat in the NFC because don't forget that it was San Francisco who could barely beat Dallas out there and Green Bay literally destroyed them today in Green Bay. All right, Chris, at the Meadowlands, the New York Jets with a big win today over Minnesota. 23-21 was the final score. Keyshawn Johnson helping the Jets with a career best 104 yards receiving. 10-7 Jets in the second. Neil O'Donnell play action. Fred Baxter wide open. Three-yard touchdown. 17-7 Jets. Phil Parcells mixed it up. Ray Lucas in the quarterback. Neil O'Donnell at wide receiver and Lucas 15 yards on the draw led to a John Hall field goal. It was 23-15 in the fourth. Three seconds left. Brad Johnson to Andrew Glover. One yard touchdown. Vikings cut the lead to 23-21. They have to go for two. Robert Smith is stopped short of the goal line. The Jets hang on for the win. A big victory as we said for the Jets because now they are alone atop the AFC East at 8-4. New England and Miami. Sam at 7-5. Yeah, the New York Jets are no longer a novelty. Good teams prove themselves good at this time of year. This is a young team maturing fast under Bill Parcells, no longer looking like a team making the playoffs, but a team that's going to be a factor in those playoffs. All right, Sam, in Chicago, the Bears snap Tampa Bay's three-game winning streak, 13-7. In Philadelphia, the Eagles get their first win in their last four games. They beat the Steelers, 23-20. It's a big day for Steve McNair and the Oilers, 31-14 over the Bills. McNair threw for a touchdown and ran for two others. In Detroit, Barry Sanders ran wild, 216 yards and two touchdowns, 32-10. Detroit beat the Colts. In Baltimore, Joe Nedney, a 43-yard field goal as time expired. Arizona beat the Ravens in Atlanta, 20-3. The Falcons knock off the New Orleans Saints. After the game, Saints head coach Mike Ditka says if things don't turn around in these last four games, he likely will quit as head coach of New Orleans. Halftime at the Kingdom. The 6-5 Seattle Seahawks in desperate need of a win. Trying to knock off Marty Schottenheimer and the Chiefs who are 8-3. and three. They continue to try and catch the Broncos in the AFC West. And our Coors Light halftime stats. Numbers pretty even. Turnovers, Seattle with two, an interception, and a fumble. Yeah, and I think the big play for Kansas City, part of that passing yardage, is Louis Aguiar throwing that deep one to Kevin Lockett. On a fourth down, they fake the punt. Aguiar setting up the first touchdown. Broussard. And Broussard trying to get outside. Broussard cut down at the 45-yard line. Mark McMillan cut him down with a 41-yard return. And, and it is the classic battle at the tail end of that play. Broussard gets in the pile, and it has to be the fact 
that when you get a big guys in front of him, he just finds a place to squirt through. But I asked him yesterday, I said, has Mark McMillan ever tackled you? Because they are part of the 5-7 gang. There are about a half a dozen guys in the NFL who are 5-7. And Broussard said, he only comes at my ankles. He knows <laughs> that I'm really a big guy. McMillan's about 53 pounds lighter than Broussard, who's over 200. Terrific return all the way up to the 46-yard line. The pitch to Chris Warren. And Warren breaks some tackles. And finally hauled down at the 42. James Hasty and Reggie Tongue bring him down. But a great block at the point of attack by Carlester Crumpler. He's lined up over Derek Thomas. And one thing that you want to do to speed players, you want to run directly at him. Well, what the Seattle Seahawks did is they moved Crumpler once he lined up on the right over Wayne Simmons. They moved him to the left side. And Derek Thomas, you don't want to run away from him because he has the speed to get you. But if you can get that tight end over him and lock up on him, that's what you want to do to Derek Thomas. Warren had just nine yards on five carries in the first half. That one went for 13 yards. Move to Crumpler and threw it behind him. Second and ten coming up. And Warren Moon is frustrated with himself because in the back of his mind, he knows that Crumpler just did a great job blocking on Chris Warren's play. So as a reward, you know, your kids do something well, you reward them. So he's going to get the ball to Crumpler. Remember, Marty Schottenheimer told us yesterday, the thing that amazes him about Moon is the receivers never have to reach for the ball. The ball is always there. A rare exception. Warren hit and held right there at the 41. Helen McDaniels, who's made some nice plays so far today. And, and not only was Chris Warren hit, but you could hear the popping of shoulder pads all the way up here. I mean, linemen pulling, knocking down on people. There, there was a lot of hitting on that plate, but just no hole for Chris Warren to run through. Again, the Chiefs defense have not allowed a touchdown in the second half since week five, all the way back in September 28th. Third and nine. Boom. Deflected. And incomplete. Pritchard was the intended receiver. Derek Thomas getting a piece of it. I think the most frustrating thing about that drive for the Seattle Seahawks is that they lose the great return by Broussard. And you, you hear the roar of the crowd. Normally you don't hear that. But Rick Tootin has come on the punt. Tootin who has a pulled pelvic muscle. And was just on today was supposed to just hold for the field goal attempts. Richardson was shaken up in the first half. And that's why he shouldn't be he shouldn't be punting if that happens. Unbelievable. And Tootin's in a lot of pain. That just was not a wise decision sending him out there. There's penalty markers and it's against Seattle. You know and that is one of those instances. Holding on the kicking team number 52. Penalty decline first down. Kevin Mawai. But but guys come out early for the second half and the kickers and the punters come out earlier than the rest of the players and they come out and warm up. You know, he's trying to, to maybe just hang this ball up there. It just goes straight up in the air. But he has convinced Dave Arnold, the special teams coach, that he can go out there. And, run. and I'm not laughing at Rick, but you can just see the agony on his face. So I have to wonder if Richardson, Kyle, that is, is hurt too, with a horrible punt. Chiefs with great field position. An injured Rick Tootin, just a horrible punt because of the pole pelvic muscle. You have to wonder if Kyle Richardson is not punting because he's hurt because he was shaken up in the first half, or they're just not happy with him because that was not a smart decision sending Tootin out on the field. Not at all. Greg Hill on the pitch. Hill not in our room. Chad Brown knocks him down at about the 48-yard line. Richardson did not look great punting in the first half, but certainly more effective than a guy with a pulled pelvic muscle. Yeah, and, and I don't know if he has a slight concussion, and maybe that's why they're keeping him out. But like I said, Tootin, he convinced the guys that he could do it. And, and sometimes you can talk your coaches in to things that you can do that you actually cannot do. He might have a concussion, Richardson, because he was really hit hard and shaken up on a play in the first half. 
But we don't know the reason why he's not out there. Complete Andre Risen at the 39. Fred Thomas right there. But Risen with another big play. Risen his fourth reception of the afternoon. And I understand Fred Thomas not wanting Andre Risen to run by them, by him. But you cannot give up that much ground, especially when you have a blitz on. You realize that you're going to rush the passer with an extra guy. So that means you have to tighten your coverage down. When he catches that ball, he's still six yards away from him. That's a 13-yard pickup. First down at the 39. And they get down to about the 36-yard line. Chad Brown and Dean Wells on the stop. As Danell Bennett with his first carry of the game. And and, and we're seeing the, the running back by committee for the Kansas City Chiefs. And, and one of the ways that is, is kind of tough for them is Donnell Bennett wants to bang it up there in between the tackles. Well, that's where they are the strongest with Sally Amua and Sam Adams. Bennett, who played for Erickson at the University of Miami, now going against his former coach. Kimball Anders has a sprained ankle. Questionable if he's going to return. And Bennett with a big game. And he trucks down to about the 27-yard line. So Bennett helping out. And right now we're getting a report from the Seattle bench. The reason Toot went out to punt was that Kyle Richardson was late coming out to the bench. They didn't know where he was. Well, you know, at halftime, you have to go in and take care of your personal business. And you never know how long doing things like that. If you need to get retaped to use the bathroom, there are lines in there. And Richardson is at the bottom of the line as far as the players go. Dan over on the reverse. A lot of room in front of him. And cut down very close to another first down. Darrell Williams made the stop. Tamarick Vanover has been a little bit of a receiver. Of course, the returner. And now running the football. But we talked about the Seattle Seahawks and the fact that last week against the New Orleans Saints, special teams killed them. And you look at what is happening to them again today. And, and they have to start shaking their heads every time a special teams unit goes out onto the field. So he got a first down on the play. Good run from Vanover. Bennett. Bennett bruising his way down to about the seven yard line. Darrell Williams again making the tackle. And Donnell Bennett looking very impressive. When you, when you see a running back running like that, the one thing you have to wonder is where is my middle linebacker? That's the guy who has to get off of the block and get to the running back. And Dean Wells is just getting caught up in the wash. He's getting in there with the guards in the center and not coming off to make the tackle on the running back. So they'll measure it just shy of the first down. Bennett trying to get more time. Again, he played for Erickson at Miami when they won the national title. But when you're playing behind Kimball Andrews, who's Maybe the best goal around fullback in the NFL was certainly one of them. It's hard to get on the field. Yeah, and, and he's listed as a fullback, but he, he's more of a running back. So he's behind Andrews at fullback. Then when you switch over to halfback, he's behind Greg Hill, and he's also behind Marcus Allen. So it's tough for this guy to get in the ball game. Seattle leads 14-10. Kansas City, though, in striking distance. Second and one at the seven. Marcus Allen and Allen has the first down gets down to close to the two and a late flag comes in well, Philip Daniels was in the area the defensive lineman for the Seattle Seahawks and it's a little bit of extracurricular pushing and shoving going on after the play Steve Wallace was talking to the official personal foul on the defensive team, number 93, for unnecessary roughness. That's half the distance to the goal, first down. Phillip Daniels doesn't make much of a difference in terms of where they put the ball. It's an extra yard, and they have the first Tune down there. anyway. So first and goal right at the one. And you mentioned Steve Wallace in the game. He's in the game in place of Jeff Criswell right now. play fake and he's going to run it in untouched Kansas City back in the lead
That's a pretty good play. It is almost an unfair advantage to have Marcus Allen in the backfield because the minute that he goes up into the line, you can see all the Seattle Seahawks clump together, commit themselves to stopping Marcus Allen from going over the pile and adding to that total of touchdown rushes that he has in NFL history. Jay Bellamy had a decision. He was guarding Tony Richardson, who would have been wide open if Bellamy went to Organic. As Stoyanovich coming on for the extra point. And the Chiefs on the board here in the third quarter. They're back in front. Just under nine and a half remaining in the third. Chris will shake it up as the Chiefs lead at 17 14. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Miller Lite, now official beer sponsor of the NFL. By Volkswagen, on the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. By Intel, makers of the amazing Pentium 2 processor. And by Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Kyle Richardson walking around and wincing a little bit. Looks like he's shaken up. Again, he took that hard hit in the first half, but we received word from the Seattle bench they couldn't find him for that punt in the third quarter. But Tootin really punted poorly, and that set up the score. Broussard, and another short kick by Stanovich. But good coverage. Broussard gets up to about the 27 yard line. Clyde Johnson making the tackle. Seattle will take over, now trailing. Broussard annoyed with himself about something. It looked like he had a lot of room there. So Warren Moon comes back on. Moon has one touchdown and one interception. Ball at the 28. Moon the pass on first down. Chris Warren and gets up to about the 31. James Hasty there. Seattle personnel wanting a late hit. You know, it, it always seems a little later when it when it's on your own sideline. And that time, Chris Warren going out of bounds on his old sideline. Stutter steps there a little bit. Well, it's you know, Wayne Simmons kind of. And, and it, it's just a love tap. He's just telling them how much. He likes it. Instead of sending them flowers, he gives them that little love tap. I get I get worried about you. <laughs> At least once a week. The pitch goes to Warren. Chase from behind. Warren finds a hole. And he's got the first down up to the 39. Wayne Simmons finally brings him down. And now, James, we're getting the report from Seattle that Richardson did indeed have a concussion. He, but Tootin's not going to punt again. It's obvious that he re-injured his, or at least the pull pelvic muscle was really hurting him after he had that punt. Well, he has that dazed, glazed over look in his eyes. And uh, Todd Peterson, we saw him taking some snaps. It would be interesting to see when's the last time that he has punted the football. First down of the 39. What a quick drop. And again to Warren. Runs into Hasty and pushes him back to the 46 yard line. Tell you what, Chris Warren, last week impressive. And he's had some good play here in the second half already. Yeah, and James Hasty said, well, the book on this guy is he's a glider. He's going to step out of bounds. I can push him. But Chris Warren is saying, you know, I'm taking the fight to you guys. And he lowers his shoulder and he actually punishes James Hasty, who is a very physical corner at the tail end of that play. Well, Seattle has one way of avoiding having to punt. Let's just keep playing first downs because we hear the Todd Peterson, the kicker, he's going to be the punter now. Warren trapped up, hasty with a tackle for a loss back at the 42 yard line. And James Hasty doing a little jawing with the Seattle Seahawks sideline. And this, you know, you talk about emotion in a ball game and, and the ebb and flow of this game, it, it has been back and forth, back and forth. And, and really, the only thing that has really thwarted the Seattle Seahawks has been their play in the special teams area. Uh, they give up the pass from Aguiar, and then we have the, the non-punt by Rick Tootin, and that account has accounted for 14 Kansas City Chiefs points. Right now, a third and seven. Four wide receivers. Moon to Pritchard, first down across midfield. 
Anthony Davis makes the tackle, but not before Pritchard reaches the 46-yard line of Kansas City. 12-yard pickup. We talked to Mike Pritchard about moving back into that slot position, and when you do that, you go to the equipment room and you say, hey, I need thigh pads and knee pads that are a little bit thicker than what I've been wearing on the outside because the guys tend to be a little bigger that play inside the numbers. And the Chiefs call a timeout. I don't know what that reason why. But we'll have the timeout. 6.08 remaining third quarter. Chiefs leading 17-14. So the punting situation a little scary right now for Seattle. Kyle Richardson has his helmet back on, so I wonder if he's going to go back on a punt. Todd Peterson, the place kicker, would do the punting if Richardson couldn't go. But it didn't appear Richardson was going to come back in. Now the helmet's back on. Either way, they haven't had a punt on this drive. First and ten once again. You see Moon approaching 3,000 yards, which would be the ninth time in his NFL career he's reached 3,000. Smith. Dale Carter with the first hit as he goes nowhere. Tommy Barnt right there as well. Perhaps, perhaps back to the line of scrimmage. Dennis Erickson 0 and 5 against the Kansas City Chiefs. As we've said a number of times, it's very difficult to score on uh, the Chiefs in the second half. Loss of one on that play, so a second and 11. Oh, quick drop complete, McKnight. At about the 41, still shy of the first down. Mark McMillan runs him out. And they've got about a third and five coming up. You know, you talked earlier about Warren Moon and, and the fact that Marty Schottenheimer said, you know, I don't see guys bending, reaching, you know, for balls that are off target. And I think Warren Moon prides himself on being very active. You know, there are a lot of guys who say, well, I had the ball close. Warren Moon understands what it's about to catch the football, how to put your guys in good position to run with it, and also when they need to be protected with a low throw. Pretty accurate numbers there, 15 of 22. Third and a long four, batted down at the line of scrimmage. Dan Williams got his hand on it. And Kyle Richardson is coming out to punt despite the first half concussion. He took a shot making a tackle. That's where he was shaken up. A tackle that wound up in a fumble by Vanover. Uh, and right here he has, you know, a, a vital job to really pin them inside the 10 yard line. You, you put this ball into the end zone and that really deflates the whole team. Probably kick, but it might be effective. It certainly is. A little redemption for Kyle Richardson. Another terrific Dateline Sunday coming up. The boldest thieves in the world. They'll steal from you anywhere, anytime. Now hidden cameras catch them in the act. Dateline tonight. Did you take my pen? No, uh, I have nothing to do with the disappearance of your red pen. First and ten. Ball back at the seven. Bennett dives up to about the ten. We've just received more injury news from Seattle. Jeremy Lincoln. With the ankle sprain, he will not return. Lincoln already starting in place of the injured starter, Sean Springs. Fred Thomas getting the extra work. And Bennett getting extra work because of Kimball Anders' ankle sprain. Second down and seven. This crowd has really tried to get into it all afternoon. Gannon complete to Gonzalez. And Gonzalez taken out at the 19, good for a first down. Dean Wells makes the tackle. And that is the, really the first time I've seen the, the pure elements of the West Coast offense today. They, I mean, they've thrown deep, they've thrown the slants. But right there, Rich Gannon, the West Coast offense is about footwork. And Rich Gannon will tell you it's about getting that rhythm 
Uh, the accuracy of throwing the ball, and it all relates to your footwork. He scans the field, doesn't have anybody open, He finds Tony Gonzalez late in the pattern. Third catch for the rookie Gonzalez. Bennett. Go, 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 go. Bennett gets outside go. and gets up to about the 27-yard line. Dean Wells in on another tackle. And Bennett getting the extra work. Here's a guy that he suffers from asthma, something he has to battle all the time. In fact, he's a spokesperson with the problem. A lot of different players have that. I remember Kenny Hill won a Super Bowl with uh, the Giants and with the Raiders. For years and years, he went on. He was out of breath all the time. Bill Parcells used to scream at him that he wasn't in shape, but he came to camp in great shape. He never realized that he had asthma. And as hard as Donnell Bennett hits other guys, they think that they're suffering from <laughs> asthma when he runs over them. Second down and three. Gannon tipped at the line of scrimmage. You know what that should go down as? You know how you, you hear the term coverage sack? Well, that was a fatigue tip. I mean, the defensive lineman could not get to the passer. I mean, they're so tired, and, and they just kind of position themselves at the line of scrimmage. Sam Adams is being double teamed in the middle of our screen. He's just going to get that big left paw up and knock the ball away, and he's throwing for Tony Gonzalez. But it's Sam Adams, that, that's the fatigue tip. That's pretty impressive. You got two guys on you. Again, without Cortez Kennedy, Adams and Sally Moore have to play a little longer than they had been earlier in the year. Third and three. Gannon, complete. Vanover. And he's got the first down up to about the 36. Eric Stokes brings him down with the move the chains. And, and, and we slip down the depth chart in the secondary. Eric Stokes is a guy who primarily would be on special teams, and you run a pretty complicated blitz. You know, you think of timing on offense and, and different things like that with the routes, but there's also a certain amount of timing that goes into running a blitz. And that time, Stokes is just a little late in picking up Vanover because you don't want to give it away. There's a guy lined up over Vanover, and then somebody shifts late to cover him after the blitzer comes up over Vanover. First down at the 35, Greg Hill. And he breaks a tackle, breaks another, still on his feet, and dives up to the 47-yard line. Terrific run from Hill, and another first down. Fred Thomas finally brings him down. And it will start to become a drive where the defensive linemen become tired and fatigued for the Seattle Seahawks. We talked about the fact that Cortez Kennedy is out. Well, no longer do you have that defensive tackle rotation and Dan Saliamua and Sam Adams are both toting around about 340 pounds worth of luggage. You don't see Chad Brown miss many like that. Play fake. Gannon goes to the sideline. And it's complete. Right at the 41, Lake Dawson. They say he got pushed out. And, and you see the, the line judge giving the, he caught it, and the back judge giving he pushed it out. That, that's that's double coverage from the officials on the play. Catches it, and then he gets the push in his back where he cannot get the second leg down. So the line judge, number 107, comes up. He caught it. The back judge gives. He got it pushed out. That's a good call. Dawson, his first reception of the day. All now at the Seattle 40-yard line. Bennett. Well, he's tough to bring down. Only got a couple, but Matt LeBounty makes the tackle. And it, it's a, almost an unfair advantage to be able to rotate your running backs in like this. You, you're throwing fresh guys at a tired defensive line. And they'll tell you, Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator, he'll say the guys are frustrated. They don't like to be playing a lot more, but they certainly are fresh, as you mentioned. Final seconds here in the third quarter. Second and eight. Quick pressure. He fumbled. And the Chiefs recover back at the 40-yard line. Dean Wells forced the fumble. Tim Grunhard falling on it. And a break there for the Chiefs. And this will end the third quarter. Gannon takes a hit. But the Chiefs hold on. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. 
Kansas City leaving, leading 17-14, third and 10 at the Seattle 40. Gannon, plenty of time. Complete. Andre Risen with his fifth catch. And good for a first down at the 27. Well, the, the zone blitz is very nice in theory, but the theory is you need to get to the quarterback. And that time, you bring some guys from the secondary and you drop Sam Adams back in coverage. You know, the only thing that Sam Adams can really cover is a big sofa seat. <laughs> so Ryzen now, five catches. First down at the 27. Greg Hill trying to make something out of nothing. Still going, still going. And he stepped out of bounds at the 22. So a second down coming up. Of course, the Chiefs, everybody concerned when Elvis Gerback went out with the broken collarbone back on November the 4th. And Gannon, this is his third start. He hasn't been spectacular, but you talk to the coaching staff. We talked to Marty Schottenheimer yesterday, and he's pretty unflappable. Doesn't let things bother him. And Gannon himself will admit that his time spent here with Joe Montana when he was with the Chiefs, he learned a lot about poise. Second down and five. And Gannon throws it away. Good coverage that time from Seattle. Yeah, and the thing that he said about Joe Montana is that Joe could throw five incomplete passes in a row and then just come back unfazed by it. And, and Marty Schottenheimer said the same thing about Montana. It was just, give me, give me the next play. And, and Gannon, you know, had been a journeyman, seen a lot of different quarterbacks. But when he watched Joe Montana uh, maintain that cool and that calm, it really taught him something about playing the quarterback position. Gannon's 32. This is his 10th year. They like his leadership ability. An experienced backup. Third and five. Complete. And very close to a first down. Gannon took a shot. And Bennett looks like he has it. Of course, it's going to depend on where they spot it. Yeah, they, they spotted it a little short of the first down marker, but this is the reason that I like Daryl Williams as a free safety. Uh, granted, the guy has eight interceptions. He's leading the NFL, but he tackles. Uh, when, the, when the team is tired, they've been out on the field for six minutes, would have been easy to miss that tackle and let the guy run past you. But he not only tackled Donnell Bennett, he took his shoe off, and then he flung his shoe about 30 yards in the other direction. Not a bad toss. And they're going to measure, obviously. That wasn't a generous spot. Yeah, but, but Marty, I think, just wanted that measurement so that he could then incite his crowd. He, he's saying he went down there to look at it, and then he's sending the guys out there to go try and pick up the fourth down. So they will go for it. You saw the distance. Schottenheimer's taking some gambles. Of course, on fourth down on a punt through a pass. Maggie R completed it. That set up the first touchdown. And the crowd here at the Kingdom fired up for their Seahawks and try to help out the defense. Yeah, and there's no way that the Kansas City Chiefs should be able to hear the snap count. Richardson and Marcus Allen are the setbacks. Marcus Allen. I don't think so, James. Dean Wells, the middle linebacker, got over the top before Marcus Allen and met him before Marcus Allen was able to get to the apex of his jump. Great, great play by Dean Wells. The spot, they're going to measure it. The spot from this angle looks short, but yeah, let's and, just wait and, and see. And all the Chiefs offensively have gone off the field, yep. and the Seattle Seahawks defensively have gone off. And they want these chains to grow here in Seattle right now. <laughs> Not even close. Well, so much is made about the Kansas City defense in the second half. Seattle defense coming up big. On a fourth and one, they finally stop Marcus Allen and take over the football.
Fourth and one, nobody better than Marcus Allen, but Dean Wells, the middle linebacker, goes over the top. Philip Daniels, number 93, and Chad Brown, number 94, come in under the bottom. And Allen rarely stopped on those plays. Seattle takes over at their own 18. They trail 17-14. Moon has time, incomplete, overthrows Carlos to Crumpler. And a second down coming up right now. Back to New York. An update with Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Mike. In San Francisco, San Diego refuses to roll over and play dead for the 49ers. Garrison Hurst fumbles, and Paul Bradford picks it up and has clear sailing. This is 78 yards on the return for the touchdown with the extra point. The Chargers are within a touchdown of the 49ers. 17-10, about 11 and a half to play in regulation. Michael? Thank you, Greg. We just don't know what's going to happen anymore. This league is nuts this year. Second and ten. Warren breaks a tackle. And gets up to the 24-yard line. James Hasty. And Jerome Woods. We've seen a little Warren. Broussard. Lamar Smith has returned. One of the patterns that the Seattle Seahawks like on third and four and five are the crossing routes where you get the receivers who slant right over the middle. I've seen a couple of times where the Kansas City Chiefs have just stood at the line of scrimmage and gotten their hands up and batted the ball down. When does Seattle go for the big play? Kansas City has given that up a little bit this year. Third and fourth. Boom. Taken down at the 24. And Seattle's going to have to punt Donnie Edwards. So Richardson back on. And if you're just joining us, Richardson suffered a mild concussion in the first half. Didn't look like he was going to come in. They put out Rick Tootin, the regular punter, who has a pulled pelvic muscle, but he really hurt it hunting again. Had a terrible punt. Richardson's back out on the field. Kamar Vanover back at the 35. High snap catches this one. And it's blocked. Darrell Carter. And they throw it out of the end zone. And a safety down on the block punt. Second one in two weeks for Kyle Richardson. Well, it'll be interesting to see if we have an illegal batting of the football. We saw the official drop the flag in the end zone. Jay Bellamy saw it. The result of the play is a safety. The penalty was for batting the ball out of the end zone. Penalty is declined. Safety is the result. So Richardson again having it blocked. Dale Carter. And, and Dale Carter. Or is, that, or is that Joe Horn? Joe Horn, I think. Yeah, Joe Horn comes off the corner from outside. We talked about his great speed, and they think that he has more speed than any of their wide receivers. And he takes off. And that, that's a leap that Carl Lewis would be proud of. Joe Horn, who's played a little bit of everything for Marty Schottenheimer. He's played defensive back. He's played wide receiver. Now comes up with a big block. And Kansas City stays in front. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. By Compaq, the most popular computer in the world. By Texaco, a world of energy. And by Fidelity Investments, where 12 million investors put their trust. Kansas City leading 19-14. Todd Peterson was out in the field, and now Richardson's back on. Richardson having his punt blocked. That resulted in the safety. It has been a rough time. Special teams for Dave Arnold and the Seahawks. Richardson gets off. That's a great kick. Van over at the 12. And Vanover tripped up. He had some room, but Eric Stokes just got a piece of him. And Kansas City will take over at the 28-yard line. Well, what an up-and-down time for him. He was so excited to get the call prior to the Saints game last week. Played early in the season, three games with the Dolphins, was released. He was kind of working out in Florida, got the call. Went up and tried out with four other kickers. Each guy got 15 kicks. He made the team. Had a nightmare game last week. 
fumbled a snap, had one blocked, and then had another one blocked today. Of course, though, when they're blocked, it's usually not the kicker's fault. But they get the blame. <laughs> but they do play a role in it as well. Gannon. Lots of room for Gannon. And he's crunched by Sally Amua at the 35. About a six-yard pickup. You know, not, not a real smart move at the tail end of that play by Rich Gannon. I think what Gannon has to realize is that, you know, he's the starter now. He, he's the man. And when you go down the list, Billy Joe Tolliver, who has just newly been acquired as the number two quarterback, and your number three quarterback is the rookie, Pat Barnes. Gerback may return the last regular season game, maybe week 15. Second down. Horizon somehow caught that low one. Good for a first down up to the 45. That's a nice catch from Horizon. You know, and, and we can beat on Fred Thomas and say he's given up uh, too much room underneath. It's the responsibility of the linebacker on that side, Winston Moss, to then get out in coverage under this out route. And, and you can see Moss coming into the screen late. And Thomas, there, there's just too much room given to Andre Horizon. You, you need to cover him underneath with the linebacker. And you also need a little tighter coverage behind. I would actually rotate the secondary to Ryzen because no one else from a wide receiver standpoint is hurting him. He's got six catches, 90 yards. Bennett. And Bennett runs into a lot of traffic after a yard gain. So second and long coming up. But again, Gannon is doing just enough for his team. Nothing spectacular. The ironic thing is he almost didn't become an NFL player, almost became a lawyer. When he was drafted back in 87, fourth round by the Patriots, they already had Grogan and Eason. And he was told by the late Dick Steinberg, who was with the Patriots then, you're a great athlete, kid. We're going to find the best position for you. <laughs> Translation, you're not so playing some quarterback. Red, some red flags flew up in his mind there. And, and he wanted out. He, he was very upset with that. He wanted to play quarterback. But fortunately for him, six days later, he got traded to Minnesota. His dad's an attorney. He was already accepted to law school. Throw incomplete. Threw it hard through the hands of Ryzen. He throws it harder than Gerback. Yeah, yeah, he does. When we talked to, to Paul Hackett, he said that's one of the things, you know, I'm starting to learn about this guy, the things that he does well. And we like to drop him back deep off that play action where he can just step up and gun the ball. And, and Andre Ryzen, who if, if you talk to people around the league, he has as good a hands as anybody. What happens is he comes out of that break late. He doesn't get his head around because he can catch the football. He can catch it almost as well as anyone around the league. So a big third and eight. Still plenty of time over nine minutes remaining. Chiefs leading 19-14. Big rush. Down in trouble. And he's sacked at the 43-yard line. Michael Sinclair with his eighth sack of the season. Adams also in on the sack. You know, a nice job in just total pressure. You see Marcus Allen, a guy who knows all the tricks in the trade, and, and what happens is Sinclair ends up right in the lane that Gannon would then try and escape through. How about Sinclair falls down, still makes the play. And again, Aguiar. We've seen Richardson with two block punts in two weeks, and Aguiar has never had a block punt in seven years in the league. Ronnie Harris is back. This is a beautiful high kick. Fair catch at the 16-yard line. Aguiar does his job. Chiefs still leading here on the fourth. Join us Thanksgiving Day for more exciting NFL action at the special time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern with the NFL on NBC. And then it's football feast. Eddie George and the Oilers battle Emmett Smith and the Cowboys. Seattle and Kansas City battling here, first and 10 at the 16. Four wide receivers out there. Broussard. <laughs> he just keeps going. Boy, and, and you know, you, you think about Broussard and you, you know, you see five foot seven and you think small guy. But at, you know, 200 pounds plus, if, if you stretch him out, I mean, inch per inch, <laughs> I mean, you, you stretch him out to 6'4 and he may be a 285 pound running back. And, and Galloway came up with the big play, beat Dale Carter early. He had a 41-yard touchdown reception in the first ball game, but injured his ankle, didn't play the second half. For a big play, Joey Galloway is what you dial up. Second down, nine. 
Boone. Complete. Crumpler. And Crumpler with some yards after the catch all the way up to the 41. James Hasty will walk for the line. Just as I was saying, for a big play, you <laughs> dial double C, Carlester Crumpler. But it all starts with being able to spread the field. You have four receivers going up the seam. And this is actually the pass that was intercepted last week in the overtime loss to the Saints. Moon trying to hit Crumpler up the seam. And Moon has just gone over the 3,000 mark for the season. Come Ninth on, time in his career he's done that. See the most ever, Marino and Elway with 11. He's 41 years old. Don't forget all the CFL numbers. I think they got one that got tipped. You know, those CFL numbers, you, you think about the, the currency exchange, you know, you give them a U.S. dollar and you get, what, about 76 cents back Canadian. So some of those seasons when he was passing for like four and 5,000 yards up there would still be good for 3,000 NFL yards. <laughs> Donnie, Donnie Edwards making the deflection there. I don't want to say that's a reach, but that's a reach. <laughs> well, I know that when I on, exchange five, my money when I go across the border, I get change back. <laughs> Second down and 10. Boom. Incomplete. The ball tipped again. And, and Crumpler is trying to plead his case. I mean, he got hooked and, and, and uh, rope coming off the line by Wayne Simmons. And, you know, he got Wayne Simmons the first time when, when he went up the scene. And Wayne Simmons just fights across the face. He has two fistfuls of jersey. But before that happened, we're not going to get to him anyway. Tommy Barnt. I don't know if Barnt actually hit it. But I, I think Crumpler is right to, uh, to try and protest there because, I mean, he just got mauled coming off the ball by Wayne Simmons. Third and ten. And whistles. That's going to be a delay of game. Crumpler and Anthony Davis getting involved. Delay a game. Offense, five yards, still third down. Seven oh two remain, and it's now third and fifteen. You know, as as well as the Kansas City Chiefs have played in, in the second half of ball games, you know, shutting down people. The Seattle Seahawks really need to shake themselves out of this funk. Uh, they come up with a couple of big plays and then a mistake, uh, delay a game, penalties, drop passes. They're making it tough on themselves. Boone looks downfield. McKnight couldn't get to it. And fourth down coming up. Mark McMillan on the coverage. So Kyle Richardson comes back on the punt. Team 14 Kansas City leading man over back of course he's dangerous it's been an adventure last couple of weeks with Richardson back there and that's nicely done short but high man over not gonna be able to return it and a fair catch just short of the 25 just under seven minutes remaining fourth quarter There's a flag right at midfield. Get over confusion out there right now. Now Larry Nimmers will tell us. And that's going to go against Seattle. Frustrated Dave Personal Arnold. Foul. On the kicking team for a 15 yard face pass. That's 15 yards in the previous spot. Still fourth down. Didn't say who it was. Number 81. Thank you. <laughs> Ronnie Harris. It's very nice of Mr. Nemers to answer a question. I mean, Harris has really struggled. We talked about the uh, two fumbles that he had one kickoff and one on a punt. Both run back, and early in the ballgame, they throw that. 
a crazy alley-oop pass down the middle. He's there, doesn't get up to bat the ball away. And now this, uh, you're talking about compounding errors in week after week after week. A guy who, he would be in a lot of coaches' doghouse right now. Erickson still says he's one of my more dependable players, but that's such the case. So now you have to have Richardson punt again. You also give Vanover another chance at returning. This is such an important game for Seattle. They're six and five. They need a win. Hoping for their first playoff since 88. Richardson, not a good punt. Vanover fumbles. Seattle recovers. At the 48 yard line. And a different bit of emotion for Dave Arnold. Vanover's second fumble of the day. Joe Kane, the veteran, recovers it. It's a short punt. Vanover's thinking, I can get this thing, get some yardage up the field. But it's in his hands and on the ground. And Kane, the nine-year veteran, coming up with a big play. <laughs> He's had a rough couple of weeks. He deserves to go nuts. First and 10 at the Kansas City 48. Seattle has not scored here in the second half. They led 14-10 at halftime, and Moon under pressure is taken down. Vaughn Booker, his second sack of the season. And it seemed like such a short drop by Warren Moon. It goes one, two, three, and a quick five steps, and he's looking to get the ball out. But, I mean, the whole pocket is being pushed on. Derek Thomas comes around the corner, and then just the whole pocket collapses on him. Five-yard loss. Ball back in Seattle territory. Chief showing blitz here. Broussard. And Broussard thrown for a loss back at the 44. James Hasty and Mark McMillan with excellent pursuit. Third and 16 now coming up. And if you're planning to pick up 16 yards on third down, you're going to have to do it between the numbers. And that's where they're they're very strong. This team with the free with the safeties, Jerome Woods and Reggie Tunk. The receivers are just going to have to go in there. They're going to be challenged physically because they're going to get hit when they go in for this pass. Crumpler in the backfield to help with the blocking. Three wide receivers moving in the shotgun. Moving across the middle. And Pritchard had to come back. James Hasty on the coverage. Crowd wanted a flag. Not on that one. So fourth and 16. And Richardson back on the punt. Talked about trying to go deep over the middle. And, and the pass really isn't open to the front side. Warren Moon tries to throw the ball behind him to stop the receiver. Something that Dan Marino does very well. But... Warren Moon just doesn't get enough air under that ball. Still a lot of time. 5-19 remaining. This is a good kick by Richardson. Man over. And a flag down at the 12-yard line. Well, Tyree Davis and Mark McMillan were involved in a chicken fight, you know, scratching at each other, maybe a cat fight, <laughs> and, and one guy got his hand on the other guy's face mask. We've seen some very costly penalties on both sides. It looks like it's against Kansas City by Schottenheimer's reaction, but let's see. Illegal hands to the face during the kick. On the receiving team, number 29. That's half the distance to the goal from the spot of the fair catch. First down. Mark McMillan. So we've got a timeout. 5-11 remaining. Chiefs leading with the football. Five eleven remaining. Fourth quarter. Kansas City with the lead and the football. 
The Seahawks at 6-5, and five, fighting for their playoff lives. They need a stop. Gannon on a play fake, lobs it, Gonzalez. And he's up to the 23-yard line, first down. Darrell Williams brings him down. But Gonzalez, the rookie, becoming a threat here today. But Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, doing a good job, good job in playing to the strengths of his team. Rich Gannon, very mobile guy. You fake up into the line. There's Paul Hackett, and you get Gannon out on the perimeter, which puts pressure on their secondary. Not only can he run the ball, but you also have to maintain coverage. Hackett says whenever you change quarterbacks midseason, it's a bit of an adjustment. Gannon adjusted quite well today. Marcus Allen dives up to the 27. Darrell Williams on the tackle. <laughs> Seattle again with all three timeouts. They need a stop. The loss last week against the Saints really put their backs to the wall. And you expect you're going to have to win 10 games to make the playoffs. Someplace Seattle's not been since 1988. So they really have to win four of their last five. Second and seven. Allen again. And Marcus Allen up to the 31. A little more than a yard short. Dean Wells makes the tackle. And a very big third and short coming up. It'll be third and two. And, and this is where the, the chess match really begins. Uh, you know, you run the ball successfully on first and second down. You line up a, a very uh, maybe long third and two, and you throw in a nickel package. You spread them out. Then you're able to try and crease them with a run. Seattle defense has been strong all season. They need a big stop here. Third and two. Gannon. Incomplete. Ryzen just couldn't haul it in. Fred Thomas's contact helping out. And Ryzen just couldn't bring it in. Fourth down. Yeah, but the man who, excuse me, Mike, the man who makes that play is Darrell Williams. He comes in, he gets his hands up, he's in the face of Rich Gannon. You can see that ball doesn't come out there with, with any type of semblance of a spiral on it. And Spider-Man, no matter how much web he has, he can't pull that one in. I think he tipped it. And his Aguiar back on. Harris is back to receive. And it is time for Ronnie Harris to redeem himself. He's back at the 23. Harris will be able to run it back. Starts at the 23. Harris cuts in across the 40. And a flag on the play as Harris gets up to the 42. There's a penalty marker on the play. And Dave Arnold irate. Reggie Tung made the stop. Another costly penalty for Seattle. And not only does it become the, the 10 yards of penalty yardage. During gonna... the run back, illegal block in the back, number 59, the receiving team, 10 yards, first down. Joe Kane, who recovered that last fumble. 2.46 remaining in the fourth. Seattle with three timeouts remaining. They need a touchdown. Our Miller time game summary Chiefs leading. Gannon solid. Moon has played well. Seattle strong in the first half. But again, the Kansas City defense in the second half has been the case all season long, coming up big. First and 10 at their own 20. Seattle with all three timeouts remaining. They trail by five. Moon batted down at the line of scrimmage. Vaughn Booker. I don't know what they talk about at halftime, <laughs> but this defense. Or, or what they feed them at halftime. You know, the, the offensive linemen have to understand where the ball is trying to be delivered. And, and at some point, you, you try and cut these guys to get their hands down. I don't see a flag. Apparently, there is one. I picked up rather quickly. Before the ball was tipped on the forward pass, there was holding a number 23 of the defensive team. That's a five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Clyde Johnson. So the ball now at the 25. Right. 
Moon in the shotgun. Across the middle, complete. Up to the 45-yard line. James McKnight. Reggie Tung brought him down. McKnight's becoming a favorite receiver of Moon. Remember, last week, he caught the game-tying touchdown against the Saints. And, and what he gives them, he gives them a little more physical presence than they have in Galloway and Pritchard. He's a very physical receiver. Uh, he came out for pregame warm-ups. I was standing with Benny Blades, and he said, look at McKnight. He has Vaseline on his biceps. <laughs> Ball now at the 40, just shy of the 45. Trying to get a playoff before the two-minute warning. Moon, incomplete. Intended for Pritchard. James Hasty was right with him. And we have our two-minute warning. Seattle again. All three timeouts remaining as they look to try and win here in Seattle. Two-minute warning in Seattle. Seahawks trailing the Chiefs 19-14. Want to welcome in those who just watched the Bengals beat Jacksonville. Second down and 10. Seattle with the ball at their own 45. They've had all three timeouts remaining. Warren move. Hit as he throws. Complete. Darrell Hobbs. Down to the 33-yard line. And the clock stops with 154 to play. You know, we talked about Moon and getting him the good pass protection. Grant Williams gets beaten, but Warren Moon has enough time to get the throw off. You need to block for that extra second. Give Warren Moon the time to scan the field. First to 10 at the 34, Seattle. Trailing 19-14. Want to welcome in those who watch San Francisco defeat San Diego. Warren Moon trying to win one. Chris Warren has it. And Warren runs out of bounds at the 22. Reggie Tung runs him out. Seahawks led this one 14-10 at halftime. But the Chiefs defense, a defense that has not given up a second half touchdown since September 28th, week five. They haven't given up a point in the second half. Seattle fighting for their playoff lives. They're six and five. A loss would really hurt them. Moon three of four for 54 yards on this drive. And a first down at the 21. Dumps it off to Warren. Chris Warren down to the 10. Reggie Tung brings him down. And Warren Moon did a nice job there. He read the blitz. They had the extra guy coming directly in his face. Sidesteps him, gets the ball off to Chris Warren, and he's in a whole lot of trouble when he takes this pass. There are defenders all around, but he does a great job in being patient, and he lets Kevin Mawai get that first block. He cuts back. He breaks one tackle. They're set up in close to the 10-yard line for the go-ahead score. And a timeout is called. By Kansas City, they have one timeout remaining. Seahawks still with three. And again, Seattle came in this week a desperate team. They lost last week to New Orleans, dropping them to six and five. They're trying to get a wild card spot. Haven't been to the playoffs since 88. And everybody talking about this being a must-win situation. Certainly, they're not mathematically be out of it. But they need this game if they want to go to the playoffs. Something they kept saying all week. Marty Schottenheimer's Chiefs, meanwhile, coming off their emotional big win over the Broncos last week. They're 8-3, still hopes of catching Denver in the AFC West. You know, when I look at the matchups as they break the huddle, the best place to go with this football is James McKnight against Mark McMillan. First and goal at the 10. Boom, lobs for Pritchard. And Hasty was right there with him. Excellent coverage from James Hasty. Second down coming up. We talked about Warren Moon taking all that time under the center, waiting for the defense to declare itself. And the Kansas City Chiefs start to creep into position. He can see the blitz coming. And you see Moon back up, and he knows that he has Pritchard. Just throws this ball a little too high. Pritchard breaks it flatter. That ball should actually be thrown to that back pylon. Warren Moon at 41 years old. Trying to lead a game-winning drive. 
and keep playoff hopes alive here in Seattle. It's been a loud crowd at the Kingdom, a rare sellout. Here comes the pressure, and Moon had to get rid of it. McKnight, the intended receiver. You know, we saw the Chiefs early. Instant to be able to throw this football. Seattle calls timeout. They have two remaining. Third and goal from the 10. If you want a guy who's been through it all, Warren Moon, 14th year in the NFL, 20 as a professional, counting his CFL days. He's had a terrific season, but perhaps their playoff hopes ride on this drive. Third and 10. Quick drop, pumps it, looks for the end zone, incomplete. Superb coverage from Mark McMillan. And fourth down now for Seattle. And Dennis Erickson wants to use another timeout. And they'll have one remaining. Kansas City's defense in the second half. We saw that graphic before. Been a long time since they've allowed a touchdown in the second half. They've got a lot of young players. Marty Schottenheimer at 8 and 3. I want to remind you, some terrific stuff on NBC tonight. At 8, 7 Central, special movie event. Brad Pitt, Aiden Quint, Julia Armand, and Anthony Hopkins star in the network premiere of Legends of the Fall right after Dateline on NBC tonight. Moon came back this year after a disappointing season in 96 with Minnesota. He had ankle problems. He thought of retiring but wanted to come back because he left with a bad taste in his mouth after 96 and felt he could help Seattle. Took over as the starting quarterback in week one. And now with a big play here. Fourth and ten. Moon is hit and fumbles the football. And the Chiefs will take over. I think that Warren Moon actually thought that the Kansas City Chiefs had violated the neutral zone. And so he's taken that extra instant to get the ball away. Reggie Tung, the second year safety with a hard hit. And Kansas City takes over, 113 remaining. Seattle has just one timeout left. And the ball is at the Kansas City 22. Seahawks on the verge of two back-to-back -back devastating defeats last week against the Saints and here today against Kansas City. Rich Gannon, who's been solid, hasn't thrown a touchdown, but no interceptions either. This will kneel it. An extra pushing and shoving. And Seattle not looking to call the final timeout. A very drained Dennis Erickson. Had the same look on his face after last week at the Superdome. And, and I don't think Dennis Erickson, when, when he reviews the game films of the offense or the defense, will, will be displeased with the way that they perform. But the real hole in this team has, has been on special teams. And for the second week in a row, they've been victimized by, by their punt game. When they've tried to punt the football, bad things have happened. They had a punt block. And it again will go down. And there's no need for this. And there's a penalty marker. Frustration perhaps set again. Uh, Seattle will fall to 6-6. Six and six. The Chiefs to improve to nine and three. As you mentioned, though, James, punt block, another one go minus six yards that set up that touchdown. And the KC defense took over in the second half. Personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct at number 69 of the offensive team. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. And Marty Schottenheimer is all over Jeff Criswell. 
you know, it, it's exactly what they did not need. You know, they have the game uh, well in hand. They stopped the clock for the Seattle Seahawks. Now you make them snap the ball twice again, and you never know what's going to happen on that center quarterback exchange. Criswell with his head down. What? Schottenheimer can get angry. That's as angry as I've seen it. Yeah, man, but I think part of it is, is Jeff Criswell, and when you talk to this guy, he's felt underappreciated ever since he replaced John Alt in the starting lineup for the Kansas City Chiefs. And that will do it. Are they going to call a final timeout? I'm waiting for him to. And now they do. Timeout, That's their third and final timeout. That's their final timeout. As Warren Moon knows the inevitable. Got a special week coming up for you here on NBC. Join us Thanksgiving Day for more exciting NFL action at a special time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern with NFL on NBC. And then it's a football feast. Eddie George and the Oilers battle Emmett Smith and the Cowboys. Plus, don't miss a special live halftime show with the Cowboys' Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, and Herschel Walker, and country star Reba McIntyre as she premieres What If in a tribute to the Salvation Army. That's the NFL on NBC Thanksgiving Day at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Maybe Reba McIntyre can draw up some plays for the Cowboys. <laughs> the Cowboys could have used them today at Lambeau Field as Green Bay whacked them pretty good. Chiefs struggled, but they're going to win. Another frustrating ending for Warren Moon. And you know, D Dennis Erickson, it's, it's necessary to call this timeout. But, but all it really does is, is prolong the agony for his ball club. As Seattle again. They'll go to 6-6. Six and six. You have to figure they have to win out. They've got some tough games. They finish up against the 49ers on Sunday night. And Gannon will finish it off. The Kansas City defense once again comes up big. Final seconds from the Kingdom in Seattle. A rough loss for Dennis Erickson as the Chiefs beat the Seahawks. We'll be back.